Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I am Pat Brock, the Public Information Officer for Lawrence County Schools, and we are interviewing seniors today. You know, with everything that's happened with the coronavirus pandemic, we've had so many things that we've had to change, and it's been very disheartening, and I think a lot of people's hearts go out to our seniors. And so this is a special way that TV35 and Lawrence County Schools can merge together and partner and interview our seniors via Zoom. Our first senior we have up is Austin Johnson. Hi, Austin. Hey, how you doing? Doing very well, and congratulations to you for being the salutatorian for East Lawrence High School. Ma'am, thank, thank you. I even have a pom-pom. I'm just gonna wave it for you right here. I hope you can see it. <laughs> Austin, you and I have talked many times, and, and we've kind of shared a lot of great things through the years, and so, I want you as a salutatorian to just kind of let us know and let the people out there know about you and your family, okay? Okay, um, my name is Austin Johnson. I'm a senior, of course. I am the um, 2020 salutatorian of East Lawrence. My parents are Skyrie and Constance Johnson. I come from a family of four, but I am the youngest in the family. Um, I'm also a three sport athlete. I played football and I wrestled for four years and I also ran track for two years. And I was also in the beta club for three years. So. Austin, you have been doing so many things. And now here it is, Mama's baby boy is the salutatorian for East Lawrence, the East Lawrence Falcons. I know your parents are so proud of you. Um, yes, ma'am. She was very happy when we first found out that I was salutatorian. She was screaming with joy. And you know, through the years, you've played so many sports. How have you been able to balance everything that you were doing with the extracurricular activities and then as an athlete and also as a student? I just knew that if I needed to keep playing on that team, that I needed to keep my grades up. And that was the most important thing, not only to the coaches around me, but also to my parents. So as long as I knew I kept my grades up, I was gonna be okay. And you know, a lot of times that can be very distracting for most students. So how is it, um, what was your worth, work ethic like through the years and how is it that you're able to do all of that and keep the balance? Because staying focused is easier said than done. You have to be disciplined. Um, I just made sure that I had no distractions around me because like after I got out of practice, I would make sure that my phone was in the next room or I had no TV on in the room I was in just to make sure I stayed focused to what I needed to do. That is fantastic. And you know, there's so many people that look up to you, Austin, and with everything that has happened to where uh, the, the graduation is now being, you know, postponed, but we're still gonna have one for you. You know, there's a, a big expectation for you on that evening to give your salutatory an address. What kind of advice right now would you like to give to not only your graduating class, but the ones that are coming behind you? Um, to my graduating class, I just want them to know that just because we may not be in school right now or the graduation may not be on May 22nd, that you have to keep your heads up. You know, life is gonna move on with or without everything happening. We can still go to college. We can still get stable jobs and have good families. And to the kids that's coming up, I just want them to know that you have to just keep your head on track because yeah. if you fall off in any time in your high school career, it's very hard to get back up. So. And you know, that is so true on so many different levels because there's so much peer pressure out there. Uh, there's so many other things that you could be doing to get distracted. But young man, you have stayed the course. Yes ma'am, I have. Um, it's, it's been hard. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's been very hard. <laughs> but everything, it's, it's been all worth it, wouldn't you say? Yes, ma'am, of course. All right, so what's next for you, Mr. Salutatorian, after high school? Uh, I'm attending the University of Georgia with a major in biology. Wow. You're about to be a Georgia Bulldog. Yes, ma'am. Now, are you going to continue to play sports, or are you putting sports on the back burner and now focusing solely on your education? Or I was going to focus solely on my education, but I might do some type of intramural sports just mm -hmm. to keep myself in shape. And of course, you know, playing club sports and, and intramurals, you know, that takes a lot of pressure off of actually being on the team itself and the rigorous uh, schedule that you would have in addition to that. 
And so throughout this time, Austin, you know, your senior year has kind of have like had like a little abrupt, you know, stop, so to speak, with the schools closing. What have you been doing to occupy your time? Well, I don't know if I told you this earlier, but my parents do own the snack box in East Dublin and I've been working there about every day. So. And I remember we featured uh, the snack box because during the times, of course, when we're uh, delivering lunches for Lawrence County Schools, your parents took it upon themselves to try and to feed students as well. And I tell you, myself, having the opportunity to go in that kitchen to meet your parents and just to hear uh, their heart and to see it in action was quite beautiful. So it's obvious that you come from a fantastic family. Um, yes, ma'am. That just makes sure I get everything I need and that I'm just set. So I'm glad for that. <laughs> so you are all set, Austin. Yes, you know, it's always been a pleasure to have the opportunity to interview you. And I think that as I tell the people out there, it's a little bittersweet for me because some of these kids I have had contact with them since they were in middle school and some grade school. And this is kind of like that exit interview for me. So, Austin, I'm getting a little... Mm, a little teary-eyed myself when I talk about it. <laughs> Any last words, Austin, that you would like to give to the people out there? Because these are very trying times for all of us. And so many people are so concerned about the well-being of, your, of the seniors 2020 class and with all the hashtags out there. And you've got people and families adopting uh, seniors to make sure that they are comforted during this time. Um, yes, ma'am. I don't have much. I just want to thank East Lawrence for making these four years of high school one of my best four years I've ever lived as of right now. And I just want to tell all the people out there that eventually this all will blow over and we'll all be good. So, you know, you just got to trust God. Trust God and know that it is all good in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it, ladies and gentlemen, from Austin Johnson, the salutatorian for the class of 2020 for the East Lawrence Falcons. Austin, we are super proud of you, son, and we cannot wait to see what the future holds. From humble beginnings with a desire to serve the Dudley community, Bank of Dudley has grown to five locations, serving Lawrence, Twiggs, and surrounding counties. Serving our community since 1905, the Bank of Dudley is looking forward to its second century of community banking. Drop in today to any of our five locations, Jeffersonville, Dudley, East Dublin, Veterans Boulevard, and Downtown Dublin. Bank of Dudley, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Meg Greer Evans, and I'm running for Lawrence County Probate Judge in May of this year. Our outgoing judge has over 40 years of probate experience. No other candidate has that level of expertise, but in this election, Lawrence County has the opportunity to elect an experienced probate attorney as your probate judge. I've spent over six years drafting and probating wills, and I'm familiar with the Lawrence County Probate Court, the wonderful staff, and all of their hard work. I know what it takes to maintain the level of service the court currently provides. A judge who understands the law, who can run the office efficiently, and will treat you compassionately and fairly. I am the candidate that can provide Lawrence County with the vital legal experience that a judge should have, and a passion for treating all citizens fairly. Please cast your vote for me, Meg Greer Evans, Lawrence County Probate Judge. the fantabulous, the valedictorian of the class of 2020 with us, the East Lawrence Falcons, McCain Bracewell. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Despite how the uh, year has had to end, it's still ending quite well for you, isn't it, McCain? Yes, ma'am, it is. So... I'm proud of what I got to accomplish before it ended, so. You know, when I saw your name as a valedictorian, I was like, little McCain? <laughs> I, you know, I remember you from middle school. Oh yeah, back then. <laughs> little bitty McCain, and now here you are. 
Share with everyone out there, uh, McCain. Tell them about you, your family. Tell them about the things that you've been involved in um, this year and through your high school career with sports and extracurricular activities and clubs. So my parents are Nathan and Tara Bracewell. And so far in high school, I've been involved with cross country. I played soccer. I ran track for a couple of years whenever they needed me. And then I'm also in the beta club, interact club, FBLA, and I do 4-H with Lawrence County. So just a little bit of what I do. Just a little bit. You are quite active. And as the, when you found out that you were the valedictorian for this class year, what were your thoughts about that? And tell us about your, uh, your parents. What did they think? Well, see, I'd already been number one all four years, so I kind of figured I was going to get it. But I was still mm. a little bit nervous because there's a little bit of competition in my class, but I was so excited. And they announced it during class, and I was like, Mr. Howard, can I please call my parents and let them know? Because <laughs> my <laughs> mom, she had been asking me for days, like, have they announced it yet? Have they announced it yet? And so I finally got to tell her, and she was super excited. So it was my dad, so. This is so great, and, and, and you're such a fantastic person to be able to represent the class in the manner that you are. Now, you know you have to, you know, prepare your speech, and of course, with the graduation being uh, delayed uh, but not denied, what are your thoughts on what you're going to speak about? Well, I'm kind of going to speak about COVID-19 and the effect it's had and not taking things for granted and just to work harder, but, I mean, We'll see what we have whenever I come to graduation. <laughs> so. and, and throughout all of this, throughout all of this, what have you, you know, talking about not taking things for granted, what things have you learned to really appreciate now? So I've really learned to appreciate sports, which I already sort of appreciated that, but it's just our last game was Dodge. And my dad, before the game even started, he called me over to the side, like right before they blew the whistle to start. He's like, McCain, you better play good because this might be your last high school game. And at first I didn't believe him. I was like, no, nah, we're going to have more high school games. But then it turns out that we didn't. But I think I ended my career pretty good. I had two goals that night. But also <laughs> with, <laughs> with our grades and like just sitting in class, that last day, I remember we had taken a test in math class and most people had not shown up because it was a three day weekend. And I was just sitting there thinking, I was like, okay, we're gonna come back Tuesday because Monday we were out of school anyway. Yeah. And we'll all get to see each other again. And then it just sort of suddenly ended. And you know, you're never gonna be in class with those people again. And you didn't even realize it that last day. And so it's just the things we take for granted, the people we got to see and everything, so. And you know, when you really think about that, it was kind of, it's been kind of traumatizing in a way. The abruptness of everything and the, ha the adjustments that we've had to make just like that. And it's been very difficult, I think, for some to be able to cope. And you know, some of us, we take a licking and we keep on ticking, but there's so many adjustments that you've had to make. Yeah, so we don't get prom anymore. I was super excited for prom. Oh, and I <laughs> that's one of the big things that I'm missing out on. I know, I know. And you know, I still remember my high school prom. Don't judge me, that was 1988, baby, but it was a special time. <laughs> it, was a, it was a special time for me. And so, here it is, McCain, when you were a freshman, do you remember yourself as a freshman? Sort of, kind of, you know, whenever you go along in the years, you sort of replace yourself with what you've become and you sort of forgot, but I sort of remember myself, so. So tell me what things, tell us what things have changed about you because you, there's growth that's taken place. And what areas, what areas? Yeah, what areas have you grown? Well, I think I'm a lot more mature and, you mm -hmm. know, I've, I've got a little bit more height, you know, so I'm a little bit taller. I got to see the world from a different view, but just growing up, you know, you don't think the same things you sort of see, you know, parents growing up, they're like, you'll understand in a couple of years. And I think right. I've finally gotten to that point where I kind of understand what they've been saying all these years. I don't completely understand, but <laughs> still like I'm getting there. I, I, you know, the adult life, I'm 18 now, right. So I'm about to go off to college, live by myself. And so I feel like I've, Kind of matured so we'll see we will see you know and i think that you know the, the the parental mind is a difficult thing to always grasp all of our concepts so it's going to take you a little time on that one there <laughs> 
And so what are, what are your plans after graduation? Yes, ma'am. So I've been accepted to UGA, University of Go Dogs. So I will nice. be attending there. And I hope the COVID-19 clears up before fall so that I can move in. But I don't really know what I want to major in yet, sort of a business or psychology or journalism. Mm -hmm. But one day I want to go to law school and become a lawyer and be a public defender for the state of Georgia. So That is fantastic. Wow. So you and the salutatorian are both going to be Georgia Bulldogs. Yes, ma'am. We've already <laughs> talked about it. We're so excited. Making us all proud. And you know, it's going to require some adjustments for you. Did you dual enroll this year or last year? Okay, so I didn't dual enroll until this semester. So this was my first semester dual enrolling. Okay. So, but I feel like I really did learn a lot with dual enrolling, not just with college classes, but like getting ready for college, you know, mm -hmm. they're not, they don't really spoon feed you as much as high school does. And so it's just getting used to that. So I did dual enroll for a little bit. For a little bit. Well, they don't spoon feed you at all in college. It's going to be it's going to be a little, a lot different for you because all the things that your, your parents have, you know, tried to teach you is because they knew that one day, McCain, you were flying away. <laughs> and I know that you've got great home training and that, and you're going to do wonderfully. Uh, any words you like to give to any of your teachers or the administrators for at East Lawrence? I would just like to thank all my teachers for all the support and the administrators. Y'all did amazing and I'm really sad and I kind of, I can't believe that I'm never going to go back to high school, but you know, it was good while it lasted. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it was, it was good while it lasted. And what message do you want to give as the valedictorian to the underclassmen? Because there's so many young men and young women that look up to you seniors. And in the position that you've been, there's been so many that have had their eye on you and watching what you do. So what encouraging words would you like to give them? And what would you like to say to the graduating class? I would just like to say, don't take anything for granted. Do your best every single day. Don't put anything off. Don't say, oh, I'll just do this tomorrow. No, do it today because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And to all the graduating seniors, I can't wait to see how y'all do in later life. I'm really excited. So. And we cannot wait to see what you do later in life, McCain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're so proud of you. We're so proud of how you have stayed with it through the years. You have kept the focus. You've been able to balance work and play. And now here it is as our 2020 valedictorian, you are able to turn your tassel. Well, congratulations, Susan McCain. And look here, I've got my pom-pom for you. I've always been in your corner, always been one of your biggest fans. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pat. <laughs> All right, congratulations. This is the valedictorian of East Lawrence High School, the lovely McCain Bracewell. Dublin Macon Cardiology, celebrating over 14 years of serving Dublin and Lawrence County. At Dublin Macon Cardiology, we're always committed to taking care of you and your heart. Bringing state-of-the-art cardiac care closer to home with a walk-in chest pain center. New patients are always welcome and no referral is ever required. Dr. Vega is proud to announce the addition of Elise Rotrammel, a nurse practitioner, to our staff. Drop by today at Dublin Macon Cardiology. 206A Hospital Drive in Dublin. All right, we've got Miss Kennedy Williams with us via Zoom. Hi, Kennedy. Hi, hey, Miss Pat. Nice to see you, darling. Yes, ma'am. Like, we have a lot of interviews together. I know, rise and shine. I'm looking at all those medals back there. What in the world? I, I've been running since middle school. Middle school, breaking records and making a name for myself. This is just a little bit of my accomplishments. That's right. Here. Say that again. I said some of them couldn't fit back here, but these are my, my favorite ones. You know, Kennedy, when I first met you, I think I met you on the track field. Just seeing you and seeing how you operate was pretty 
pretty awesome. Share with the people out there of Dublin Lawrence County about you, about your family, and talk to us about your high school experience, okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, my name is Kendi Williams. I'm a senior at East Lawrence High. Um, my mom is Kalia Williams and my dad is John Williams. Um, I've been a part of so many clubs, like I run cross country and track. I use some of my awards for winning like state my ninth, 10th grade year. Almost my 11th, I got sick and I could have did it my 12th grade year probably because I did it in the past, but I'm in a lot of clubs like FBLA, Beta. Well, FBLA, I'm the president and like I'm in Interact, so I'm just active all throughout my high school life and middle school. Being involved in so many different extracurricular activities, how has that helped you as a person? Because I think that when we, we talk to kids about being involved in clubs and with you being the president of FBLA, what ways have those organizations helped you to become a leader? Well, for me, I feel like I work better when I'm stretched thin or something like that. I feel like I, I work better when I'm under pressure. Like if I know I have, I'm just like, I don't know, I put extra effort in it. Cause when I, when I look back, I'm like, every year I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not about to do all these clubs and sports, but then I end up doing that. I'm just like, it's just easy because I'm used to stretch myself out thin. I feel like people should try to apply themselves to as much as they can because a lot of the clubs that I've been a part of opened me up to seeing new stuff and meeting new people. And I learned that I can do a lot of stuff by myself without other people. That's good. So you're having to, and you have learned how to stand on your own two feet. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like for a club I joined is Y Club, is Youth Assembly. Every year I go by myself. I'm the only one for East Lawrence to represent and go. I go at West Lawrence because they have a club and we don't have a club. Like we have one, we had one my ninth grade year, but I guess nobody wanted to host it like a teacher. So my mm -hmm. 10th, 11th, 12th, went there with West Lawrence and got a senior statesman award for going all four years. And it was, it was real fun. That is fantastic. And so you've set goals, you've obtained those goals, and now here it is, graduating from high school. What things are you gonna miss most about high school? Even though I'm probably gonna, I hate to say this, but I miss the track meets. Like, I have <laughs> real bad anxiety and I overthink. So when I run, I'm just like, oh, I'm not gonna do good. But then I do good, so I think I'm gonna miss the thrill of that. Maybe art class, but I like to draw too. <laughs> <laughs> And so tell us about some of your plans after high school. I plan on taking a biz, like a direction or pathway in technology, like mass communication and business. Mm -hmm. I love computers. I, I, I think my parents and my family think I'm the technician or the computer IT person of the family because anytime a computer or electronics mess up, oh, Kendi, can you fix? I'm just like, okay, bring it to me. Don't you bring it to me, I can fix. So I think that's what I want to do. That is good. I mean, it requires a gift because not all of us are techno savvy because I know I call on some people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. This world is getting more tech, tech savvy each year. More new technology coming out, like new iPhones and new, mm -hmm. new type of software. And it's just like somebody got to teach. And that is an excellent field for you. Do you plan on staying here to go to school or are you going away? I'm not sure on that because... Mm -hmm. I do not want to stay down in Dublin. Like I want to, I'm the type of person I want to see new things, go different right. places. And I don't want to stunt my growth staying out here. I'm not saying this it's stunts your growth, mm -hmm. but I just want I think there's bigger things out there than just a little old middle Georgia. <laughs> there are, and I'm a young lady who has lived to tell about it. And so you're thinking, you're not quite sure, you don't have it all mapped out yet, but you do have plans to where you may want to leave Dublin to pursue uh, your uh, education and career, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have, I think my mama said, like, she helped me. My mom helped me a lot with my fast was Like, the day that it was due, she had it already together. I was just like, whoa. Like, some people just started doing their fast for months later. But she told me, like, we looked at a couple schools, and I have, I think I got, like, 30 different acceptance all over. So, I mm -hmm. got options. I just, I just don't want to choose the, the wrong thing. Since there's so many options, I don't want to. That's right. And so now the, now's the time to where, you know, you're home, we've got the shelter in place. Unfortunately, our schools had to close, so you're having some downtime. Yes, ma'am. What have you been doing on your downtime besides sleeping? Okay, you, you took that out. Well, <laughs> I've been eating a lot of snacks. Um, I, I'm 
I'm kind of scared to go outside, but I go out there because I it's very pretty. It's like the weather is so perfect. Like during school, the weather was scary, but now it all yeah. want to be all pretty and stuff like that. But I've been playing games and ordering stuff online too, like random Amazon buying. Like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Your Amazon account is booming. All right, so give some <laughs> give some advice, Kennedy, because I know that you have had to grow up in a lot of ways. You've had to learn, uh, you had to learn to be able to be okay with Kennedy. Uh, give some words of encouragement to some young people out there. Because when you see, I saw you on the track field and I've seen you run and you're amazing. You're like a gazelle out there when I see you run. And I think that that's been your happy place. What words of encouragement would you like to give to some underclassmen, the ones that are going to come up behind you as an athlete? What would you want to say to those people? Um, I would like to say to stay focused and positive. I mean, people probably say that over and over, but I know a lot of people that had the potential to become state champions or greater than what they wanted to do, but they stunted their growth by like following other people that don't eat, that doesn't even run or do sports or do anything for themselves, and that messed them up. So I say just focus on you don't focus on anybody don't try to please anybody like you do it what you want to do well not like that but like you do what what that speaks to your heart or what sports or what things you want to do like like I'm, I forgot to mention I'm in band too I'm the band <laughs> captain and I taught and I was lieutenant and I was section leader for clarinets too and I know a lot of them were looking up to me and saying how they um like how positive and happy I am I'm just like you gotta be like that sometimes but um, you got to put your foot forward for some things that you that you stand for or really want to see happen. Like, don't try to be somebody else. Or I know a lot of people that try to be what they're not mm -hmm. meant to be. And I feel like people should. You know. That's good. And, you know, and I think that that comes with time. That comes with being able to discover who you are. And I think some young people, they have to go through a, a little uh, bit to kind of even see that in themselves and and then they're adults you've got your teachers your parents you know you've got your peers that can help pull that out of you and i think that's what happened with you to where you've matured in those areas what message do you want to give to your graduating class because the day that you all had your last day of class you didn't know it was going to be your last day well i want them to like my mama used to always say like keep striving for the top because the bottom mm -hmm. is too crowded i want them to become better like we try to be we always used to say oh 2020 is the best class like we need to be that best class just because high school didn't like give us that chance to experience our full high school not career but like year I feel like we should talk with our actions in the in like the previous year I mean the next year's like show our success because I know a lot of people in my grade that are good at a lot of stuff but I hope they really push themselves and make it make a name for themselves all right, so that's what your class of 2020 needs to do is to keep pushing for greatness and make a name for yourself. Any last words, Miss Kennedy? Thank you. Oh, thank you for the interview. And this is my last interview with you, Miss Pat. I enjoyed it. I didn't touch no <laughs> mic or nothing, you know. <laughs> we did good. You did good. You got to stop moving around so much, though. You get a little, you got ants in your pants. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I don't know, I'm just a little nervous for some reason. Like, this is my last interview with you, I don't know. I know, we've had some great times, haven't we? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I want you to know that I, I love you, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of the ways that I see that you're growing, I'm proud of the fact that you're, you're able to step back and see some things that Kennedy needs to change about Kennedy and that Kennedy needs to keep moving forward and by any means necessary, not letting anyone or anything stop you from reaching the top. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, thank you, thank you. All right, love you, girl. Keep pushing, and we need to hear back from you. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, positive feedback, positive feedback. Positive feedback. This is Kennedy Williams, Class of 2020, East Lawrence Falcons. Georgia Military College is a two-year associate's degree granting institution. We are an open admissions college. What that means is all you need to do is have a high school diploma or a GED to get accepted into GMC. We offer several associate's degree programs including 
business administration, pre-nursing, psychology, criminal justice, as well as education. We offer classes during the morning, evening, and at night. We even offer some weekend classes. We offer online classes as well as in-seat classes, whatever is convenient for you and your schedule. We are located at 200 South Jefferson Street in Dublin, Georgia. If you want a great education with small class sizes, affordable tuition, we would love to see you here. Stop by to see us or give us a call. Start here, go anywhere. Georgia Military College, Dublin Campus. Hi, I'm Don Carswell, General Manager of Dublin Chevy Buick GMC. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that Dublin Chevy Buick GMC cares. Whether picking your car up for service or delivering your new car to your home, Dublin Chevrolet cares. From Dublin Chevrolet to your driveway. Anywhere in the state of Georgia. And to make it easier for you, we're offering 84 months at 0% with no payment for 120 days. Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. We've got the lovely DeAsia Lothar with us. Hi, DeAsia. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you. You look adorable. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. You know, it's so it's so different having to interview you all via Zoom because I'm used to like hugging you and squeezing you and asking you about your, how your mama is, you know, in person. <laughs> Right. And now here it is, but you know, we're making, we're making uh, the best out of this situation. So thank you for agreeing to speak with us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So now the floor is yours, DeAsia, where you can share with us about you and your family and your high school experience. Because as an athlete, of course, I remember interviewing you, you were a wee young one. <laughs> and so here you are. So, so share with the people out there all about you the things that you've been involved in in school and share with us about your family, AKA your coaches. <laughs> well, my name is Deasia Lothar. Um, I am the daughter of Danielle and the Wayne Lothar. Um, I have two siblings, sisters actually, and their names are Deandrea and Deanna Lothar. So that's, um, that's my family. Um, I, my high school experience, it, it's been good. It's been wonderful. Um, I will be finishing in the top 9% of my class being an undergraduate. So that's a plus. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> um, I'm a three-sport athlete, and which I was named Player of the Year. I was MVP, two-time All-Region, yes. and All-State Honorable Mention for softball. Um, I also play basketball and track. And also in softball, we went to the Sweet 16, nice. which hasn't been done at East Lawrence in softball history at East Lawrence for fast pitch. So it hadn't been. That is, that's fantastic. Because when you're talking about uh, the, the accolades that you were calling out, I mean, it, I know it comes from you having to work hard, not just on the field, not just during regular practice times, but you have had to work your tail off, literally off season to be in the position that you're in. Tell us all about that because I know your parents, you know, are Coach Danielle and Coach Dwayne Lothar. I've been knowing them for a while, but talk to us about your relationship with them and, and how they help get you ready to be, you know, player of the year and all of that good stuff. Well, um, they, they've been, they're my biggest support system. They're always here. Anything that I want to do, they're here for me all the time. And when I started playing softball, t-ballish, but I wasn't good. I wasn't as good as I could have been. And I didn't really actually get into softball to maybe my third grade year. And I was like, mama, I, I want to play and I'm serious about it. She was like, okay, well, we're going to put in the work. We're going to do this. And you're going to be out here every day of the week and <laughs> getting better. I was like, okay, I'm ready for it. And ever since then, I've been working 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 to get where I am and um name everywhere and stuff like that I've been working hard seven days a week mm -hmm. for however long until I'm comfortable with what I'm producing and you you know when you talk like that you talk about you know your your parents being your number one support 
I mean, it requires such a strong and intense work ethic for you to be an honor graduate as well as to excel in, in sports the way you are. Right. How do you balance everything? How do you, how do you keep yourself balanced to where you're able to give everything you need in the classroom, give everything you need on the field and on the court, and to be successful in both of those arenas? For, first and foremost, you have to plan. So if I have a game that night and it's an away game and I'm not getting back to like 11 o'clock and I have a test the next day. Well, on that ride back or on that ride up there, I have to study and mm -hmm. make sure I know my material so that when I get in the classroom the next day, I can ask my test. So it's just about <laughs> planning and knowing what your responsibility is because First and foremost, you're a student athlete. Student comes before the athlete part. Look so you that. have to make sure you're doing good in the classroom. You know, just to hear you and to hear how you have matured has been fantastic. Now, you have a sister that's uh, a college student? No, I'm the oldest. At you are the oldest. So, oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm the oldest. <laughs> so you're the that, oldest of the three. <laughs> yes. So that's a responsibility as is already just being the oldest of two younger siblings. Tell me about the relationship that you have with your younger sisters, because they're athletes as well. I remember being at the elementary cross country meet and your, your baby sister was up there first place. Yeah, she's the runner of the family. I will say, she, I don't know where she gets it from, but she's the runner. But um, my relationship with my sisters are good. There is it's awesome. Nothing, something that everybody wants and I just feel that I have that relationship with my, my, with my sisters that I could talk to them about anything and they can talk to me and to know that, that I'm always there for them and they're always there for me. Um, being athletes, I help them a lot. Like when they're in the backyard pitching or hitting, I'm, I'm out there, I'm helping them to get them to where I am and greater. That is so, so good to hear because your relationship with your siblings is so very important. And now you're going to be able, you're going to be leaving soon. Tell us about your future plans. Um, my, one of my goals since I was in fifth grade, and you probably know this from being at the game changer um, thing that we had, but I've always wanted to play division one college softball. Mm -hmm. And Fortunately, I've been given the opportunity to do so, and I will attend South Carolina State this fall, if hope, <laughs> to um, play softball, and I will pursue my degree of middle grades education also, which was also one of mine. Oh, you know what, D.A., you just gave me chills right there. The South Carolina State University, oh my goodness. Congratulations to you and middle grade education. So you're following in your parents' footsteps, honey, because you got two great athlete parents who have been pushing you and your sisters. And now here it is, your dreams are coming, coming true. And it's because of the hard work that you all put in there, you've put in place, you've been pushing your entire career. And here it is, you're about to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Right, yes ma'am. Well, congratulations to you. I mean, I hate that our time is up because this has been so nice, you know, just to hear how you have matured from when I first interviewed you in the fifth grade. Mm. <laughs> and to, to listen to you and just to hear everything that you all have worked so hard for and to see it manifest in itself, to see you right now, it warms my heart and I could not be more proud of you. Thank you. All right, good to see you. I look forward to going somewhere to see you play, honey. <laughs> I'll be a softball auntie if I have to be. <laughs> Love you, and I'm so proud of what the future holds for you. Love you too. All right. Deasia Lothar. Hi, I'm Jeff Cannon, President of Citizens Bank of Orange County. When we began looking for a location for our second Dublin banking office, the historic Henry Building looked like the perfect spot because Dublin and Lawrence County is our focus and making banking easier and more convenient for our customers is our goal. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, 
member FDIC and an equal housing lender. A local full service community bank offering quality banking services. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, now open in downtown Dublin. Over 70 years ago, my granddaddy, H. Dell Thompson, began serving Dublin and Lawrence County as a country lawyer who wanted to serve the people. My uncle, Scott Thompson, continues the practice of law and is a local prominent historian. I learned the value of service from my family. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. It would be my honor to serve you as Lawrence County Probate Court Judge. We've got Mr. Logan Fleming with us. Hi, Logan. Hey, Miss Pat, how are you? I'm good, how are you, son? Uh, I'm well. You know, I get so excited when I see you and and it's so hard to not be able to have you guys right here in person because you know that just makes the world a difference. It's it's fun doing interviews with you because you you're always <laughs> excited and you always make the room bright. I mean, you are um, you're very you're very you're an outstanding young man, and your family. And I think that whenever I see you and I see you perform the way that you do, it really makes me proud to see how you have matured through the years and how you have truly grown. Thank you so much. All right, this is our this is probably our last interview, um, Logan, and I don't want to get teary eyed before we get to know you better. <laughs> So share with everybody, share with everyone about you. Uh, let them know about the, uh, the work you've done in athletics and, and, and in the classroom and share about your family and the support that you have from your family. Um, as she has already told you, I'm a student athlete at East Lawrence High School and I play football, I wrestle, and I play soccer for all four years of my high school career. I've been a part of a wonderful Falcon family as I've come through East Lawrence and it's been a wonderful time as I've participated in everything. Wow, you've been so busy for so long. And now it seems like the, the last day of school that you didn't know was your last day of school, it kind of seems like for you seniors that things just stopped. How have you been able to adjust with everything going on, Logan, still keeping your fo focus and still keeping your eye on the prize? Well, like before our last soccer game, I was talking to my best friend um, and I told him, I was like, this is probably going to be our last day of school. So, like, I kind of figured that we were going to be done whenever we were done. And here you go. Here you are. You're done. And so, when you look back on your, your, your four years of high school, in what ways, Logan, have you evolved as a person? Because I think that as years and time goes by, it's important for us to be able to see the areas in our life where we need to improve and where we need to grow and things we need, adjustments that we need to make about ourselves. What things have changed about you to make you the person that you are today? Just being able to figure things out better, process things in my mind. You know, we get better at learning new things, but there's always new things to learn. Mm hmm always. And you know, your family, when I see you at the games, when I see you participate in your athletics, your family's there. My family's always been there for me. My mom, my dad, my brothers and sisters, everybody's always been there for me. And that's something I'm really thankful for. And you know, when a lot of times when you see student athletes and it's important to have people out there in the stands, out there rooting for them and, and pushing them, how much has that helped you be the athlete that you are? It makes me feel better, more secure about myself, knowing that I have people there for me no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. And so what things about high school are you going to truly miss? Because I think that sometimes we're in the thick of things, you know, you're like, oh, man, I can't wait for this to be over. I can't wait till I'm not having to do this anymore. What is it that you're going to really miss about the high school experience? The thing I'm going to miss the most is seeing my friends every day. Mm. Like, people have always told me as they've grown up that they've lost a lot of friends, and that's hard to believe because you've always had them around. Yeah. And it makes sense because... Uh, are your intentions to, to move away to go to college, or what are your intentions after high school? Um, I plan to go, or I plan to stay here. Mm -hmm. 
at first and then move off once I get my associate's degree. Okay. And so staying here a little while, that's going to help you kind of, you know, help that transition a little smoother for you to move away a little bit better, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so what is your takeaway from high school? So, so you're going to, you're transitioning and there are so many young boys, young men that have looked up to you through the years for you as a, an athlete. What words of wisdom do you want to give them? Because I think that a lot of times young people idolize those that they see in certain positions or, or, or want to wanna emulate them. What kind of encouraging words do you want to give those young people? Don't hesitate to do your best. That, yeah. That's it. I mean, don't hesitate. And what do you want to say to your class, the class of 2020? I'm glad we got to spend these years together and I hate that it ended this way. I'm telling you, Logan, because when you think out, think about it, there's a lot of things that you all have had to miss um, your high school year, things that you were expecting and anticipating. And especially with you as an athlete, things that have been cut, your seasons that have been cut short abruptly. And so that's a lot of things that you all have had to take in and be able to process and, and just be able to deal with. And you have you been handling things okay? Um, yes, ma'am. I got, I saw it coming, like, whenever all of this started. I figured that, uh, like, a lot of sports would be cut short, and I hate it for all of us. Like, I, I play soccer in the spring. I know. And that, all of that's been canceled. And the people who are playing tennis and baseball and everything else, their season is also canceled like mine. I know. And I, I stated last night, I made a post on our district page just letting people know that we are all in this together. We're all going through a lot of the same things, and I think that we're all having to make the adjustments to move forward. So we're very proud of you, Logan. Thank you, ma'am, so much. So proud of the young man that you've become. Uh, this is our. This seems like it's going to be our last interview. I hate to hear it. <laughs> it's always been great. It's always been great to see you, to chat with you, and, of course, I miss those hugs, you know, just to let you know. I appreciate you and your family, everything that you've been to, uh, to East Lawrence High School, East Lawrence, and the community in itself. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Nice to see you, Logan, and make us proud. Building relationships is as easy as FSB. For more than 100 years, Farmer State Bank has been helping people just like you. Integrity, commitment, service. That's Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Farmer State Bank, Lawrence County's leader in hometown banking. You know, this has been such a wonderful day getting the opportunity to Zoom interview some of our amazing seniors in the Lawrence County School District. And today it is the East Lawrence Falcons. And next up, we've got the lovely Harley Buxton with us. Hi, Harley. Hey, how are you? Doing so well. How are you doing? I'm good. Have you been able to kind of manage things since school has been out and, and we've had this shelter in place? What have you been doing these days? Um, well, I've been doing my schoolwork, of course, but now mm -hmm. my free time, I draw a little bit. I help my mom clean the house. You know, <laughs> just a little things around here to keep me occupied. <laughs> I mean, that's good. I mean, you're still keeping your work done. You're still being creative and you're helping around the house. Who would not love that? <laughs> All right, we want to get started with you, um, Harley. We want you to share with us about you. Tell us about the things that you've been involved in at East Lawrence, um, extracurricular activities, any sports you've been playing, and let us know about your family as well, okay? Okay. Well, my name is Harley Buxton. I go to East Lawrence. I'm actually a senior this year, and I did dual enrollment. I started my sophomore year, the summer of my sophomore year, and continued up. So um, I graduated from GMC this year. I was a full-time dual enrollment student and high school student at the same time. So I had to manage going to school and being a regular senior, let alone with going to college every day and doing online classes. 
So I actually have my associates. I will not get to walk for college. That's kind of a little disappointing, but I worked so hard. So I do get my associates, but um, I do beta at East Lawrence. Um, I actually help in the special needs classroom, which I've absolutely fell in love with the kids, the students. The teachers are absolutely the best. I love them to death. It's like a family there. Um, I'm actually in the honor the Honors National Society, which is basically kind of like beta. Um, I'm in that. And in college, I'm in PTK, which is their honor society for school. Um, I'm a, an honor graduate this year, which I've kept that up going through school. I was one of those where I had to have my work done on time. I always wanted to be the associate extra one. I had to make sure everything was in rows, but I guess that's the way I grew up. You know, I was always told through school, you know, that my great grandpa used to tell me, um, if you don't have an education, you don't have nothing. You know, that was one of the important things he like pounded in my head. And when he passed away, I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and get my education. So, you know, one day I will have something, you know, cause if you don't have it, how am I going to get a job? How am I going to support a family that maybe one day that I'll have, you know? Mm -hmm. um, my family has impacted me a lot through school. My mom is a single parent, so she raised me and my brother by herself. You know, our dad was in the picture for a little while, but we don't have the close relationship that we should. Um, his family, I love them to death. They are absolutely the best. You know, we still have a great relationship, and I'm so blessed for that. Um, my mom's family, we were always closer. I was closer to her father and my great-grandpa on her side. You know, they helped raise me, and they really impacted me a lot through school that, you know, you could have this. My grandpa used to tell me all the time, I come home, I made a 90. You can do better. So it's one of those things through school, well, I made this great, but I can do better. I can reach for the stars because, you know, life, school, education, you know, that's something nobody can take away from you if you have it and you gain it. And, you know, that's not something that somebody can just snatch away from you because you earned it. We, I mean, you know, just listening to everything that you're saying, Harley, and how hard you've had to work, how focused you have been, the advice that you've been taking from your grandfather and realizing that your mother being a single parent what that entails and you've tried to definitely make the load a little bit easier for her and of course now you have graduated with an associate's degree before you walked across the stage with your with your high school diploma so that is fantastic thank you I mean, you are well above the, the power curve. You know, I often think about, I said, wow, you know, the two years of college I had to go through to get my associates. The fact that you were able to do that now, that is definitely putting you ahead of the power curve. And I mean, there's nothing but great things to come for you for that. Thank you. And so when you're talking about everything that you've done, all encompassing, uh, what has your high school spirit experience been like, Harley? Well, high school, growing up like my ninth grade year I transferred I went to Waco and I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it you know it was a new environment I had to basically get you know new friends and fit in the atmosphere because it was my first time to high school let alone I did not know nobody and some things some tragic things happened my 10th grade year and we come back home and I started back at East Lawrence which I grew up with these people but you know, some of them I kept in contact with, which I was so gracious for. And then when I started college, I guess it was trying to balance both. I was one of those that, I'm not going to say different, and I'm not going to say it was hard to fit in, but I was one of those I call a loner. Mm -hmm. You know, I stayed more to myself, which I had great friends through school that, you know, I text them, you know, we did most of my friends were the ones that I went to college with and seen every single day. You know, I still spoke to everybody else. Everybody says I'm a social butterfly, but <laughs> I spoke more to the ones that was right there with me who understood the struggle every day that we were all going through. The ones that we all sat there and had meltdowns during class because we were like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to manage? How are we going to write this? 
five page paper with this autobiography and we don't even know what that is <laughs> like we had some great times and the experience of being able to volunteer and help out in the special needs classroom and getting to meet those kids and those teachers it was that was something I wanted to do every day. I loved going to school. I loved being able to see their faces. I loved being able to see my friends and talk to them about what we were going to do or our plans for the future, which they always told me I always had everything together. I was one of those. It was lined up and I just knew what I wanted to do. I was going to be the first one to graduate. I was going to be the first one to get married and have kids. I just had it all in a book and I was so organized. And I'm like, if you only knew what I went through on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, apparently you make it look so easy, Harley. And the volunteer, the volunteer service that you've been doing, the relationship that you built with the with your your peers and how you've been able to manage things, of course, to balance everything. If you could give some advice to some of the young people that are watching, some of the undergraduates, what would you tell them? I would tell them to not take everything for granted because when you least expect it, something can be snatched from you in a heartbeat and then you're gonna be like, well, I wish I would have done this, or I wish I would have done that, you know, mm -hmm. take everything one day at a time, don't rush through high school, because trust me, when you're a senior, you're going to be like, where did time go, don't skip <laughs> out on doing the little things that, like going trips with your friends, or going to prom, or, you know, that's one thing that I can say, like, my junior year, I didn't go to prom, because I went my freshman year, and I was like, you know, Prom's not for me. Like some things I can say is not for me. But, <laughs> you know, tape, it may not be for you, but, you know, what if you don't ever get that? What if you don't ever get that moment in school? What if, you know, like me, I don't get to walk across the, co you know, the stage for college to say I did it. They just mailed me mine, you know. So, yeah. You know, work, work hard. Don't play around in school because at the end of the day, I've learned this, those so-called friends that you have in school, when you graduate, you won't ever see them again. You won't, you won't have, some of them you will, you'll have the best bonds with them, but some of them you won't. Some people just out for themselves and, you know, sometimes you have to do what's best for you and, you know, at the end of the day, your education is all that matters. And you know, that's such great advice. You know, I want to uh, make sure I bring up the point where you talked about not to take things for granted. And because of the fact of how your senior year of high school has uh, ended or is ending the way that it is, what things right now that you can think of that you're so thankful for that at one point you were taking those for granted? I would have to say, like, being able to be around my friends, to be able to see them every day, even though some of them got on my nerves, <laughs> to being able to sit in a classroom with them and laugh about some of the things that came out of their mouth, right. to be able to sit there and help with the special needs kids and being able to put a smile on their face, to know mm -hmm. that I'm not like everybody else. I'm actually their best friend that when they need me, I'm there for them. The moment that I did beta and went and helped with the Special Olympics, you know, mm -hmm. the little things that I enjoyed so much and loved to share so much time with some of them kids that I've become mm -hmm. very, very close to them. And if they need me, they'll just call me and be like, hey, I need to talk to you. <laughs> I love that. I love the fact that you have built relationships genuinely, that you have a servant's heart where you love to give and love to give of yourself and to give back. And those are some excellent qualities, Harley, that you'll be able to take with you, not just now, but when you mature and become the adult um, that we expect you to be. Any last words? No, ma'am. <laughs> All right, you've already, you're graduating from high school. You've already got your associate's degree. What is next on the horizon for Harley Buxton? Well, I got accepted into the University of Augusta where I plan to pursue my BSN degree and then my nurse practitioner. And then I'm going, hopefully, that I get accepted into Emory. 
and I want to go and further my education to be a heart children's doctor and later a heart surgeon for children. Wow, that is fantastic. So you're definitely uh, on the right path and we, we hope and pray nothing but the best for you. Stay focused, continue to make sure that you don't take those little things and people for granted and that you are really staying focused and keeping your eye on the prize. We're proud of you, Harley. Thank you. And I'm so glad I got to see your lovely face. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> Congratulations and take care. We're proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lovely Miss Harley Buxton, who already has her associate's degree. Woohoo! Hi, I'm Matt Sapp, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. Our fresh cut meats include cube steak, stew beef, chuck roast, Chuck High Steak, ground beef, ground chuck, and if you love steaks, you'll really love our New York Strip, T-Bone, and our ribeye and choice or prime cuts. And our marinated steaks have a distinctive taste that you'll be sure to love. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday, 8 to 6. We've got Saness Moon here with us, a.k.a. Sunny. Hi, Sunny. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing quite well. It's nice to see you. I love your hair. Thank you. I cut it myself. Honey, you are a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sunny, share with us. It's been a while since you and I have spoken, but, of course, we've interviewed many times. But just share with the people out there who you are, some things that you've been involved in, because you've been a very busy girl through the years. And tell us about your family and your activities here uh, in East Lawrence High School. Uh, okay. Well, my mom is Siobhan Hofer, and my dad is Michael Moon. At East Lawrence, I've been a part of the girls' soccer team for four years, marching band for four years, uh, senior beta for three years, FBLA for one year and interact for one year. <laughs> you have and been so busy. Also, <laughs> yeah, and I'm also class president. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to pause. We are talking to Madam President herself, Sunny's Moon. Madam President, that is that speaks volumes about you. <laughs> <laughs> So many things that you've been involved in, Sonny. How have you been able to balance everything through the years and to stay focused? Uh, well, it really helps me have like a really good support system. Mm -hmm. I've talked to some of my teachers and I was like, please, if you ever see me not on task, just <laughs> remind me, I have something to do. <laughs> and, you know, lots and lots of student planners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it easy to lose focus? Yes, especially with <laughs> being in high school and trying to um, experience, you know, the teenager life while also trying to, you know, not screw up too bad so you could still have, you know, a good chance at your future. It's very easy to get off the task. And you, and, you know, your teenage years and my teenage years are quite different to where your the peer pressure nowadays how is it that you're able i mean you're talking about being focused there's so many things now that you could be involved in could just make you lose focus <laughs> i guess uh you have to have like a really strong conscience and mm -hmm. like you have to be very self-disciplined like i said no and i mean no <laughs> there you go honey i love that i love that and so for you, you're, I think you're quite mature. And every time that you and I talk, we always have some of the best conversations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what is your takeaway? So for you, you have, you've grown a lot through the years. You've had to learn and discover who you are so that you're able to even identify where you want to go in life. Tell us about all of that. Um, so all throughout high school, I kind of just, never really made up my mind on what I wanted to do not until like recently <laughs> mm -hmm. so when I was in ninth grade I was, 
thought I wanted to be like an author of some type. And so I wanted to go to college and uh, major in like creative writing or linguistics. Mm -hmm. And then I took a ninth grade literature class and I decided I did not want to do that. (laughs) And uh, in 10th grade, I decided I wanted to be like an entrepreneur maybe, or like a business owner. And then I decided I didn't want to do that either. And there was no really cause for it. It's just, I just like, I was like, mm, that does not sound like something I would be interested in. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> recently I was deciding uh, on science because science has been my favorite subject all throughout high school. And it kind of comes naturally to me. Like, it, I feel like it comes really easy to me. And so I was decided I either wanted to be an ecologist or like an environmentalist because I'm really like concerned with the welfare of the earth and like saving it for future generations. Mm -hmm. And then I also decided on a forensics investigator because I watch a lot of forensic files. And even though that's nothing, the real life is still pretty interesting. I, I like how your mind has worked and how you've evolved through the years of first thinking creative writing and then business. And now here it is. I want to be an environmentalist. I think that this is definitely uh, has been very self-discovering for you, hasn't it? It has. And so what's next for you, Sonny? Uh, hopefully in the fall, I'll be starting uh, my freshman year at Bruton Parker College. Mm-hmm. majoring in biology and I'll also be playing soccer as a lady baron <laughs> what congratulations Thank oh you. my so uh you know this right here is huge for you you've decided on what you want to do you're working hard to do it now you're going to be able to go to college to play a sport that you have loved so much and major in something that really gets your mind going and really affects you internally as well about the environment. Yes. That's wonderful. (laughs) I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. And it's nice to see uh, that you have a plan. And I think that you've been working on that for quite some time and here it is, it's coming, it's coming into fruition. What things do you want to say to your senior class? Because you all are parting ways. We are. (laughs) Uh, I just want to tell them, like, even though that we, even though we've uh, parted ways way too soon, Mm -hmm. we are still, you know, class of 2020 strong. I think we all have the ambition and the drive to do whatever we want in life. And we just need to keep that going. We can't let this one one path of adversity get uh, get us down because in life comes adversity and we're going to have to get over it all the time <laughs> spoken like a true president thank you so much for sharing with us sunny you know it's been nice getting to know you through the years it's always been nice to interview you i know you guys start off a little shy with miss pat because i have to tell you how how it needs to be done and you all have been doing it and, and that's one thing I'm going to miss about the class of 2020, because I think I've developed a relationship with you all as well. Just seeing you all grow and seeing you uh, mature in the ways that you've had, not just academics, but as well as the athlete athletics as well. We're definitely going to miss you too. <laughs> we always miss you doing our interviews and we just love seeing you around. You're such a great person with a great spirit and truly one of my role models. Wow. I love you and thank you for saying that. And I look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. And of course, you'll be at Bruton Parker, so I'll still get to come and see you play. Yay. (laughs) All right. Love you, Sonny. Good to see you. You too. Bye, Miss Pat. Bye-bye, darling. That was Sunise Moon, ladies and gentlemen, the class president for 2020. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that Dublin Nissan is here for you. Whether we're picking your car up for service or delivering your new car to your home, Dublin Nissan will take care of your transportation needs. From Dublin Nissan to your driveway, we'll deliver. Anywhere in the state of Georgia. And to make things easier for you, Nissan is offering 0% up to 84 months on selected models. 
Dumlin Nissan, the only dealer you will ever need. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Mr. Seth Farmer with us. Hi, Seth. Hello. Nice to see you, son. You too. All right, Seth. Now, listen, we need to hear all about you. Tell us about tell us about you. Tell us about your family. Tell us about the things that you've been involved in over there at East Lawrence, any sports you've played or any kind of extracurricular activities. We want, we want to hear all about it. Okay. Um, I'm Seth Farmer. I'm 18 years old. I go to East Lawrence High School. Um, I play football and I play baseball. I used to play, run track. And um, I'm also in uh, FBLA and FCA. And my family, my dad, he works for Middle Georgia Mechanical. Mm -hmm. My mom, she works at, she teaches uh, fourth grade at Johnson County High School. Nice. So you are a student athlete here. Now, Seth, how would you say your high school experience has been and how have you been able to juggle it all being an athlete and keeping your academics on, on scale? High school is, it's full of like twists and turns. You just got to make the most of what like comes your way. Mm -hmm. And the way I juggle like being a student athlete is I got to make sure my grades are there and make so like I can play. Cause like in order to play, you have to have good grades. And if I don't have like at least a B, then I'm not, so I'm not happy with it. <laughs> I hear you. So the t from the two sports that you're currently playing or played this year, which one is your main sport? Football is probably my main sport. I love yeah. football so much. Nice. And what position? Uh, cornerback and wide receiver. Nice. Now, so listen, Seth, now with you after graduation, do you plan on going to college, uh, the military? What are your plans after high school? I plan on enlisting into the United States Air Force. The Air Force. My husband is retired Air Force. You're going to love it. I can't wait. You're, I'll leave at the end of July. You're going to love it. I mean, I was an Army wife for 20 years, and now I'm an Air Force wife. And I think that what that does for you, what it's going to do for you, Seth, is for one, it's going to show you a whole new world. And um, you're going to learn skills and crafts that are just going to set you up for nothing but success. Yes, I can't wait. What does your family say about you going into the military? Uh, my dad and my grandpa, they're all big fans. My mom, my, my grandma, they're not really happy with it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing it because like for everything they've ever done for me, I just thought what's a better way to repay them. And you know, and with you, and it's very, uh, it's a very mature decision for you to make. And I, and I think that I try to tell young people not to take your uh, life changing decisions, you know, just haphazardly, you know, and going into the military, I mean, that's a huge act of service that you're doing. And you say, what better way for you to, to pay them back or to, you know, but you're actually doing a service for our entire uh, nation. And so for that, we're proud of you. Thank you. All right, now, Seth, so we, listen, we need to know what kind of advice can you give to the young people that are still at East Lawrence? Because I'm sure that in your four years of high school, there's so much that you've had to learn. What kind of advice do you want to give them? Just no matter what comes your way, just take it head on, do the most you can at the best you can, and don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because I promise you, if you put your heart and soul into it, you can do it. And that's exactly what you've been doing, hasn't it? Yes, ma'am. What are you going to miss most? There's a lot. <laughs> uh, sports, sports is going to be one of them, hanging out with my buddies. Um, just the, like, when I first came to East Lawrence, just like the first thing that hit me was how big of a family and how welcoming they were. That's what I'll probably I'll miss the most. Yeah. I mean, and it's like uh, one of the students was talking about how important it is to not to take things and people for granted. You guys didn't know when your last day of school that it was your last day of school. Exactly. And you, yeah, you, you had, just, plan uh, yeah. you had plans for the rest of the year of how you were going to live out your senior year experience. And so you've had to make some adjustments. Mm, yes, ma'am. How has that, uh, how has that been for you? Because I think that 
you know, just looking at it, we see what it does. But I mean, I think that also affects you all as being seniors. That affects you a little bit internally as well. How's that affected you? Um, it just kind of takes away, like, because like when I was a freshman, I always just dreamed of like finishing out senior year, going on senior trips, just hanging out like the rest of the year, waiting on graduation to happen in May. But and now that that's not going to happen, and you just kind of like step back and be like, wow, I took all that for granted. Yeah, yeah. And that's understandable. And of course, the fact that you're about to, you'll be going into the military. And so your life is going to be so much different than the way it is now. Yes, ma'am. And I think that you have to be, you know, mentally prepared for that. And the fact that you're talking about things that you were looking forward to your senior year and, and they are, they're not turning out quite that way. You're having to make those adjustments. And so here it is, you're about to serve in the Air Force. This is going to be, this is a big thing. We want you to keep in touch with us, okay? Most definitely, I will. Let us know how you're doing and come back wearing that uniform. I tell you, it's going to warm your mama's heart. <laughs> Any last words, Seth? Um, just to the kids out there about to graduate next year and the years to come, just keep your head up, push through anything that comes your way. All right, and you do the same. You take your same advice. Yes, ma'am, I will. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, Seth Farmer. You too. All right. Take care, my son. Community Bank of Dublin Lawrence County is here to help you with all of your financial needs. Our team knows what it takes to make life easy and convenient and will help you get set up with our mobile and online banking. We founded Community Bank on common sense banking and a dedication to help people just like you. Our lender, Amy Thompson, loan officer, Gail Rainey, along with our assistant vice president, Ryan Lastinger, executive vice president, Brian Bazemore, and president CEO, Chuck Harwell, know what it takes to make life easy and convenient and can help you with loans for almost everything from your automobile, home, land, or any financial goals you have. Come visit us today. Community Bank of Dublin, Lawrence County, where common sense banking never goes out of style. Hi, I'm Pam Tillery. And I'm Jody Tanner, the TNT Group of Century 21 of Dublin, Georgia. And to the 2020 seniors, we say, be on guard. Stand firm in your faith. Walk in love. Be courageous and strong. Senior strong. Congratulations, Congratulations 2020, 2020 seniors. <laughs> got the lovely Miss Julia Lukey with us. Hi, Julia. Hi. So good to see your face. Good to see you too. <laughs> you know, I tell you, it's, it's so hard for me, I would say, not being able to go into the schools and see you all and, and love on you and now having to interview you this way, but seeing your face is still just as special. <laughs> all right. So we're ready for you to get started, Julia. Share with us about you, um, your family. Talk about the things that you've been doing in high school, if you've been participating in sports, any kind of clubs you've been a part of. We want to hear all about it. All right. Well, for okay. starters, my name's Julia Lukey, and I'm a senior at East Lawrence High School. I'm really focused on my schooling, and I'm hardworking, and I love to work. And my hobbies include watching Netflix and hanging out with my boyfriend and <laughs> eating a lot. <laughs> and I love riding the river and playing kickball with my friends. And I'm the daughter of Tara and Dale and Clements. And I am the second oldest of five children, step siblings included. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy spending time with my mom and my stepdad. Julia, you are so hilarious. You, you called out one of my passions, one of my guilty pleasures of binge watching Netflix. <laughs> I love that. And we had just played kickball in the yard like two days ago. So girlfriend, yeah, and we played. did you? I mean, yeah, it's like, you, I, out, I was sore. <laughs> but it's good that you're still getting active, you know, and just trying to do some things um, as best you can with the social distancing and the shelter in place, you're still trying to do something to keep your sanity, right? Yes, right, exactly. 
And so you've been handling things, apparently you've been handling things pretty good. You've been having the opportunity to spend time with your family. Yes. And so when you first got all the news about the schools having to close, um, things we've had to cancel, things we've had to rearrange, what have been, what have been your thoughts, Julia, on all of this? And how have you been able to just stay focused? Well, at first I was kind of like happy about it, but as the time went by and they said that we was no longer going back to school yeah. for the rest of this school year, I kind of, I was hurt because I enjoyed seeing my friends and I enjoyed learning new things at school, especially in pre cal with Miss Morris. But um, the only way I've been able to keep my sanity was like whenever they would give us schoolwork online, obviously, but um, I just, it's been hard extremely yeah. hard with being a senior and everything and missing out on prom and graduation being pushed back it's it's mm -hmm. difficult and it's and, been really hard. and i know that it is a lot for the class of 2020 to kind of be able to to digest because these are things that you just automatically knew were going to take place you look at your district calendar you know what's taking place you've got things in your planner of what what you're doing here what's going there and then it all, boom. Like I just sent out my graduation invitations a week before school got canceled. Oh. And I was in complete distraught. I told yeah. them I cried whenever I looked on the internet and they said that we was no longer going back, I cried. Yeah. And I don't think that you were the only one that cried. I cried because... <laughs> Because I think that how this affects all of us, Julia, is that we all have a role to play. We all are a, you know, a huge piece of this puzzle. And when schools close, we're not able to necessarily do our jobs the way we're used to doing them. And one of the things, one of the highlights of my job is being able to interact with you guys. I know, I miss seeing you. <laughs> I know. So I'm seeing you now, so I'm doing this here. And so you have still seemed to be able to handle things. You're still trying to find the bright side of things. And how can you encourage someone else? Because there's a there's students all around the nation who are struggling. There's seniors who are struggling right now, trying to even grasp what everything is taking place. What kind of words can you do to give to encourage them? Honestly, I would say that you can't really just focus on the present with this situation. You have to look into the future and see what is going to come out of the situation. Like, we're still going to graduate. Even though the school may not be hosting our prom, we are still going to have something done for us. And when you're able to look at it that way, seeing the glass half full instead of half empty, that actually helps you get through the day, doesn't it? Yes, extremely. And so if we're looking to the future, Julia, once you graduate, what is it that you're going to do with your life? Well, I don't want to leave Dublin immediately after I graduate because mm -hmm. I want to help my mama in any way that I possibly can because she still has to have surgeries and everything, so I want to stay back and help her. But I plan on going to OFTC and getting my nursing degree mm -hmm. and then just continue growing and prospering for the future. When your mother, when your mother hears you say that, that's going to bless her heart so much. I've told her that. I've said I don't want to leave Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> because what that says to her is you're not looking – you're not being a selfish child, you're being a selfless child to where you're looking at the big picture and seeing where the sacrifices that have been made for you from your mom, now here it is, you're wanting to do things to help her. Yes. That is spectacular, darling. You're gonna make a fantastic nurse. Thank you. <laughs>
What else do you want to share with the people out there? Because we know that you've made connections with your with your peers. You've made connections with your your teachers and mentors and and administrators. What kind of words do you want to leave behind and how do you want to be remembered? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, well, I know for the class that's coming up behind us, I do want to say that although this may sound hard to hear, you need to go ahead and realize who your friends are because in the long run, they probably won't be there when you truly need them. So don't focus on having that one group of friends. Keep mm -hmm. like finding other people to do stuff with. And although you may be young, you can have your future figured out. Wow. And although it may be hard to realize that at the moment, mm -hmm. you just have to look, you just have to look into the future. You can't focus on friends, focus on your schoolwork, you know, um, and, and I, you know, let me say this because you're talking about um, about being focused to not let every decision you make be on the friends that you have at that moment. Yes. Not decide. Don't decide to go to a school. I'm paraphrasing here, and you tell me if this is making sense. Don't decide to go to the school just because your friend goes to that school. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need to focus on your schoolwork. You have more things to go on like okay i'm not that great with words <laughs> you know what it's but, uh, it's okay i think that you express it how you want to express it okay yeah. you're good but i really don't know how i want to what i want to be remembered by let me just let me answer that question for myself and then you listen to me okay, okay. i want people to remember me by as someone who was honest someone who really cared about people for real, mm -hmm. uh, that I have a genuine soul, meaning um, if you ever need me, to know that you can always count on me. That's how I want to be remembered. I want people to know that I'm very loving, I'm fun, but I'm very serious when I need to be serious. <laughs> See, we have the same, I'm the same way. Like, um, I'm fun when I can be, but whenever I'm at school, I'm very serious about it. So, like, you can be fun, but you have to be serious at the same time. And I got a good heart as well. And, um, you know, I'm understanding. Like, when my friends are going through situations, they know that they can come to me because I've possibly been through those same exact things. So I know what I can and can do, what I can and cannot do to help them. Well, Nurse Julia, you just you just uh, paraphrased your your whole being very beautifully. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I want you to continue to do great things, continue to strive for greatness, and don't take no for an answer, and continue to be that loving person that you need to be. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So proud of you. Thank you. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. That's Julia Lukey, everyone. The City of Dublin's Natural Gas Department is offering a $1,000 rebate on the purchase of a natural gas, stove, furnace and tank or tankless water heater for new construction homes or if you're remodeling your home. Individual rebates include natural gas tankless, up to $400 rebate and free gas service installation, natural gas tank, free 40 gallon or $200 rebate on other sizes, free gas service installation, natural gas furnace, $200 rebate natural gas stove $100 rebate natural gas dryer $100 rebate natural gas grill $100 rebate natural gas logs $100 rebate maximum yearly rebate no maximum save now save later call the city of Dublin natural gas at 277-5048 got Mr. Jacob Brooks with us, the man with the plan. Hi, Jacob. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. 
You know, Jacob, you and I talk a lot. We have talked many times. And of course, I light up every time I see you. We want you to really share with the people out there of Dublin Lawrence County. Uh, talk to them about who you are. Talk to them about your family. And let's hear about your high school experience, okay? Um, I'm the son of Stacy and Michael Brooks. I have six other siblings and I play football. I ran track one year with the school. Um, I played, I was in Skills USA, FFA. Um, I just had a great time enjoying it. And you know, Jacob, every time I see you, you know, I always have to get on to you to make sure you're doing the right thing. You know, that's how we mamas are. Uh, how have you changed through the years, through your high school years? Because I think a lot of times when we start as freshmen, there's a lot of maturation that we have to do to get to the point of when we're seniors. What areas have you changed in, Jacob, that make you a better person? Um, I think my work, my work ethic changed from my freshman year to now, being that as I got older, I started working and um, I believe that that was one of the main things that changed in my attitude about the schooling and finishing getting the diploma because you just about have, a, have to have it to work anywhere now. So mm -hmm. it changed my attitude about getting it. That's good. And talk to us about being a student athlete because I know you love sports. Being a student athlete can be hard work. Uh, trying to juggle the practices and learning the playbooks and studying film and doing your homework. And it can just be real tough doing it. And, but you have to learn how to manage your time better to be able to do it. That's right. Just staying focused, you know, um, tell us about uh, what has been, if you have like a memory, if you could think of something from your senior experience, what has the, been the most exciting thing that's happened for you? I think just spending time with the principals, really. Um, me and Coach Williams had a real good bond, and we still have a real good bond. And, you know, I think that just sitting up there in the office, coming in, you know, from work in the mornings, talking to him before I go to class is the best memories I got from the school. I'm telling you, you know, it's those little things that truly matter. And what is it, um, what kind of advice that you could give to the upper class, the underclassmen that are coming up, things that you probably didn't know that you wish you had have known? What kind of advice would you like to give them to be successful? Just work hard and keep your mind on the right things and keep it focused on your schoolwork and the athletic stuff comes after that. That's right. And so what are your plans after high school? I plan on attending Tulsa Welding School in Jacksonville, Florida to get mm -hmm. my uh, welding certifications and kind of just move from there and see what God has in plan for me. That is going to be wonderful. So you're moving away from home. That's the plan. <laughs> how does how does mama feel about that? I don't, I think she's a little more hesitant of it, but it's just for nine months and then I'll be back. And I think that, you know, as mothers, whether you have one child, if you have seven children, it's always very difficult to see one fly from the nest. And of course, you know, you've got your sister who's a college student. What advice has she given you? Um, we hadn't really talked about it because I'm I hadn't really set in stone till probably a week or two ago on what I was gonna do. So she hadn't really I hadn't really came out and told him what I was gonna do yet. So it's ah. kind of still I hadn't really let them know about it yet. Okay, I got you. And so what kind of what message do you want to give to your parents? Because you know your parents have been there with you through the thick and the thin of things and I think a lot of times as, as parents, we do so many selfless things for our children. What message do you want to give to them right now? Just thank them for being there for me through the thick and the thin, even how I get on their nerves all the time. I know they still love me through it all, but um, 
you know, I'll be back home. And you know, when you come back, you're going to be a different young man. I hope so. <laughs> Any last words, Mr. Jacob Brooks? Just keep your mind in the right places and focus on what's important. Well, we're extremely proud of you for focusing on what's important. And like you say, you know, it takes a little time to grow up in a lot of areas. And I think that where you are now, you're really thinking soundly and you're actually looking forward to your future. I am. I'm ready to see what it holds for me. All right. Well, we're so proud of you, Jacob. Always great to see you, son. Good to see you, too. All right. Bye-bye. This is Jacob Brooks. At Morris Bank, we understand that your personal finances and banking experiences can be stressful. We also know that it doesn't have to be that way. That's why for over 60 years, we've dedicated ourselves to providing common sense banking to people just like you. We work hard to combine the latest online mobile technology and top-notch customer service that allows us to do just that. We realize our customers have choices, but what sets us apart is the personal service that we provide that they may not receive at larger institutions. We like to make you feel at home and we like to make the process as easy as possible when you're banking with us. But we're not focused on helping just our customers. We are equally dedicated to supporting the community we are a part of. Just this year alone, we've logged thousands of community service hours and provided significant financial support to the communities we serve. We want to make sure you have the best banking experience possible. Come see us or give us a call to find out what makes Morris Bank different because we're banking on you. We are here. We've got Mr. Landon Lamp with us. How are you, Landon? Good. How are you, ma'am? Good. So nice to see you, even though it's from a distance. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Have you been handling everything with the coronavirus and the shelter in place? Uh, it's all right. I, you, you know, you just get more used to knowing yourself and feel, you just figure out a lot more about you. That's right. We're discovering ourselves, aren't we? Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> And speaking of discovering ourselves, we want you, Landon, to really share with us about who you are. Talk to us about your family. Talk to us about the things that you're involved in in school. And tell us about how, that, how your high school experience has been. Well, I'm 18 years old. My name's Landon Lamp. I'm a former, you know, I guess a graduate of East Lawrence High School now. <laughs> I did SkillsUSA all four years of high school. And I, and I competed in carpentry and teamwork. I uh, place in first and second almost every time. Wow. I, you went to state this year or supposed to have gone to state this year? Oh, yes, ma'am. You know I was supposed to have been up there with y'all. I'll show you will be. <laughs> and, you know, you all have worked so hard with Skills USA, and just to watch the things that you all have done and how you do it, I mean, it changed my life to see the, the work skills that you all have learned in Skills USA. Oh, yes, ma'am. It changes mine as well. What things are you going to miss about high school? Because I know that, you know, when it's time to go, a lot of people are like, look, I'm leaving. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> Is there anything you're going to miss about high school? I'm going to miss a lot of my high school friends and a bunch of my teachers as well. Yeah. Just the culture I mean around high school. You know, when I graduated from high school, our, our friends, you know, we made this pack. Hey, we're going to keep in touch. You know, I'm going to come home on the weekends. We're going to still hang out. When I got to college, things changed because my life had to change. What are you planning on doing after high school? Well, I, I plan on going to OTC to get my degree in construction management. And it's so mm -hmm. long I'll be a construction mm -hmm. manager at a construction job. Landon, that's fantastic. Oh, yes, ma'am. And the skills that you've already learned uh, through the work that you've already done with Skills USA and things like that, I mean, you are definitely ahead of the power curve, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, ma'am, indeed. 
<laughs> How are your parents doing? Tell us about your family. My parents are doing phenomenal right now. They're so just <laughs> loving and caring, and they support me every, every way. Do you have any other siblings? Oh, yes, ma'am. I have three other siblings. Now, where do you fall in the age category? Are you the older one? Are you baby boy? I'm the older one. Oh my goodness. So you're the, you're the first born. And so you're the first one that's graduating. You know, that's going to be a very emotional time. You know, when we have the ceremony, that's going to be quite emotional when you kind of reflect back on all of your years of high school and the things that you enjoy doing with your friends, the classes, the connections you've made, and then bam, your life is changing. Oh, yes, ma'am. Tell us about your, your teachers. Which teachers have really, uh, or administrators, have really influenced you throughout the years? Uh, Mr. Cutler has indeed influenced me through the years, and also Miss Lawrence has also. Miss Lawrence, I remember she was my daughter's star teacher. I mean, and, and Mr. Cutler, the work that he's been, through, been doing through the years has been quite phenomenal. And so, Landon, we need you to give some advice to the younger people out there. Give some advice to the underclassmen because I know that you have changed through the years, haven't you? You've matured a little bit, haven't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. What advice do you want to give to the underclassmen, the ones that are going to be upcoming seniors? What would you like to say to them to help make them be successful? And what do you want to say to your senior class of 2020? Well, to the underclassmen, don't ever give up. Don't no one let strike you down from what your goals want to be. Always push forward and keep moving forward. And to my fellow classmen, we will get through this, and we have graduated from high school. That's right. You're going to make it. You're going to get through it. And, and Landon, I want you to know, we want you to know that we're expecting great things from you. Oh, yes, ma'am. There's no, there's no pressure to do it, but I know that you put an expectation on yourself, young man. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Any last words you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Uh, I just thank you for the opportunity of me interviewing. This is, I mean, you know, when, when I got contacted, I'm like, yes, the more the merrier, you know? And I know it's a little different from the way we normally interview, but look, I'm getting to see this handsome face. The people are out there getting to see your face and, and hear you share with us. And you know, it's a, a wonderful sight to see. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good to see you, son, and please keep in touch with us. Let us know how you're doing because, you know, you're about to manage some people and you're about to take everything that you've learned, the growing that has taken place in you, and then you're about to be a future leader. We're so proud of you, Mr. Lamp. Thank you. Take care, son. Hey, want a successful career? Start with an education that puts you front and center with hands-on experience. An education that will prepare you for opportunity in two years or less. An education that's fast and affordable. Most OFTC students graduate debt-free thanks to the HOPE Career Grant, which offers free tuition in more than 63 programs. Think differently about college. Choose OFTC for an education that's fast, local, and debt-free. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. All right, we've got the lovely Miss Danny Barwick with us. Hi, Danny. Hey. How are you, Queen? Good. It's nice to see your lovely face. I've missed you in the office. I know, I miss being there. And I know a lot of things have changed, so we kind of really want to remind some people about you. So if you would share with the people out there of Dublin, Lawrence County, some things about Danny and tell us about the things you've been involved in here at East Lawrence High School. And we want to hear about your family. Okay, so I'm Danny Barwick and my parents are Greg and Danelle Barwick. I'm in the Beta Club. And I am the homecoming queen, and 
they, and, I'm, and I'm on the cheerleading team. And Danny, I remember the night you were crowned homecoming queen. You look beautiful, by the way. Thank you. And here it is, a, a cheerleader. You've been, how would you summarize your high school experience? What has it been like for you? To me, I feel like my high school experience, I have made friends that have become family because I've always been in the gifted class. So I've had the same classmates from third grade to my senior year, and we have every class together. So really, they were friends that became family, and I, that's my favorite part about high school. And you know, the relationships that you have built through the years and, and the things that you have experienced with all your friends, how did you handle everything once we had to close the schools? Honestly, I'm very upset about it because I've always been the person that never looked forward to graduate and I never wanted to leave high school because I didn't want to leave my friends. And I know like once people graduate, like your friendships tend to like fade away and I never wanted that to happen. So I've been very upset. And you know, and it's, it's an adjustment I think that everyone is having to make because I think we all have our emotions or what we're feeling about it and especially the seniors, I mean, the class of 2020, we know that this has been very difficult for you. And thank you for being honest about how upsetting it is uh, that there's so many things that you were looking forward to and now you're not going to be able to do them and some things are having to be delayed. And so Danny, with all this aside, all of this aside, tell us about, tell us about how Danny's changed. Because when you first started high school, you were a certain way, right? And then your senior year in high school, you've changed through the years. What have you had to learn in order to change and to be a better person, like the person you are today? Um, I kind of had to learn to not care what others think, but just to be yourself because people will accept you for who you are. Yeah. And to be able to be okay with your within your own skin is something I think that we all have to learn each and every day, wouldn't you say? Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Okay. Tell me about the relationship with your cheerleading friends, your colleagues. Okay, so I would say the relationship with my cheerleading friends is very strong because when I was in the 10th grade, um, the doctor told me that if I had another concussion, I wouldn't be able to cheer. And I was very upset, but I was like, you know what? I'm a cheer anyway. So I cheered and then I got another one and I was unable to, um, compete my senior year, but the coaches made a spot on for me on the team as a manager. So basically I would go to them to every event and all the practices and like motivate them. And I just feel like that made a bond, too, because I was there for them, even though I couldn't compete with them. I was still there for them. And, you know, you and I had talked briefly about that, and I know that had to have been devastating for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> the injuries you had to sustain and then the fact that you, have, you were still able to go out and be with them and be that support system that they need, that showed a quite mature Danny Barwick. Yes, ma'am. All right, so tell us what's on the horizon for you, Danny. What's What does the future hold for you? Well, right now I'm going to finish up my associates here in Dublin, and mm -hmm. then I plan to transfer to a school, which I haven't decided yet, but I plan to be a physician's assistant. Very nice. You know, and from our experience in the military, PAs are such a great need and just to see the work that my PA friends do on a daily basis is great and we're so excited that that's what you're going to go into into that medical field what kind of advice do you want to give Danny to the young people that are coming up because you've had to learn a lot of things in a hard way uh, with your injury to where you could no longer cheer uh, give an encouraging word to some young people out there that need to hear it I would say that time is precious and to not waste your high school years away. Wow. 
is definitely precious. And what message do you want to give to your class of 2020? Um, that I love them and I'm definitely going to miss them. Wow. I think there's a lot of love going around here. Well, it's been a pleasure seeing you, Danny. I, I miss seeing you at work. I'm going to miss seeing you uh, in the hallways and, and you know, get it. This is probably our last interview together. <laughs> but it's been special getting to know you and uh, seeing the young lady that you have really blossomed into is such a phenomenal thing to see. And we look forward to what the future holds for you. Thank you. All right. You have any last words you want to give? No, ma'am. <laughs> All right. This has been wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the beautiful Miss Danny Barwick. Love you, Danny. Hi, I'm Matt South, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. For fresh hand cut meats, try our St. Louis ribs or our seasoned ribs. If you like sausage, you'll love our original, our Cajun sausage, or try our jalapeno cheddar, smoked, or ghost pepper cheddar sausage. That sure enough is hot. Our pork selection includes cubed pork, boneless chops, Boston butts, and more. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday, 8 to 6. been such a wonderful day having the opportunity to zoom chat and interview some of the East Lawrence High School seniors of course you know we would love to be there with one another but we are finding the next best thing and we've got Emma Kate Baker with us hi Emma Kate Hey, <laughs> doing well how are you I'm doing great looks like you're outside what you've been doing today So this better be the best interview you have ever given in your entire life. <laughs> All right, Emma Kate, share with everyone about you. Let them know about things that you've been involved in at East Lawrence. Let us know about your clubs that you've been involved in. And we want to know about your family. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, go for it. Well, my name's Emma Kate Baker. I've gone to East Lawrence my whole life. Uh, my parents are Donnie and Rhonda Baker. Uh, my mom is a teacher at East Orange Primary. I have been a part of the competitive and spirit cheerleading squad since my ninth grade year. And that's pretty much it. Girl, you guys have been tearing it up out there for cheerleading. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you know, I know with school having to close abruptly, I know that was difficult for you. How have you been able to make it? I think the way others have been able to make it, trying to enjoy the little bit that we did have together and rem reminiscing on the like memories and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've tried to keep myself occupied. It kind of is sad because like, I didn't know March 13th was gonna be my last day <laughs> walking the halls of East Lawrence High School with my friends. I didn't get the proper way to say goodbye to my friends. Mm -hmm. So. It's kind of hard, but I'm trying to talk to them as much as I can and still trying to make memories with them, even though we're quarantined. That's right. These are called quarantine memories, honey. And you know, it's nice that you're still trying to stay connected. And of course, yes, the abrupt closing of the schools and, and then with the COVID-19, the shelter in place, that has caused a lot of people to have to make a lot of adjustments. Yes, ma'am. I want to brag on your mama for a minute, though. I mean, your mom, they were kicking tail. They've been kicking tail making those masks. Yes, ma'am, they have. I think they made over 3,000 already, probably more than that. I'm sure because I, I've spoken with her, you know, messaging with her and some of the other ladies in the community, in our district. They have been doing some wonderful things. Have you helped her out at all? I made one mask. One <laughs> It was not good. I messed up so bad on it. 
Please don't tell anybody that. Well, you've already told everybody that. <laughs> a mask. We didn't give it to anybody. Yeah, you keep that mask for yourself, Emma Kate. <laughs> and you know, with your your high school memories and the the times that you have been with your cheer squad, tell me about that relationship that you have forged through the years. I think it started when I was in ninth grade. I looked up to the seniors and the upperclassmen. And I looked how they had a relationship with me, and I guess that's just stuck with me through the years. Mm -hmm. And I have di like, there's different relationship with each girl. Like, it's weird, but we're all just one big family. And I think that most of it is trust because I'm a base, and the flyer has to have a lot of trust to go up in the air mm -hmm. and like trust you to hold her up and to catch her. So. I think it's just that trust and then that family bond that mm -hmm. has just stuck around. And I think that it's important to have that trust and be like a family for you all to have been together as long as you have and to compete so well together. That's yeah. super important. We had a very tough year this year. And I think, cause we've been doing um, girl groups on Thursdays. We haven't been able to since quarantine, but mm -hmm. I think that's helped most of us being able to come together because we talk about stuff that's going on in our lives and mm -hmm. like normally at cheer all you do is go to practice practice and then go mm -hmm. to competitions on Saturday and I think that Thursday girls group helps us bond more together and that is you know so that's where you're finding that silver lining of despite all of the hardships that are taking place, you're still able to find uh, that time and that space to be able to bond and be there to support one another. And that's a good thing. What are you gonna miss the most about high school? I'm gonna miss my friends the most out of high school. <laughs> it's, I, it's weird to say that because I talk about, I say it all the time. I hate these people. I hate seeing these people every day. <laughs> and then you think, well, I'm not going to see them no more. I'm not going to be able to like walk down the hall and be like, hey, Zach, hey, Cam. So it's, it's sad. It's those, th those small things that you take for granted and the relationships that you take for granted. And now here it is. It's right here in our faces, right? Yes, ma'am. And it's making us really think and really take some things into account. So what happens to you, Emma Kate? Where are you going? What, where's life taking you after graduation? Well, I plan on staying here a year at either GMC or Middle Georgia. I haven't made up my mind because I'm already doing dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully the fall of 2021, I'll get to transfer to Georgia Southern and get my degree in labor and delivery nursing. Wow, honey, that is fantastic. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm too old to be one of your patients now. <laughs> I'll, bet, I'll get Hannah. <laughs> You'll get Hannah. <laughs> well, that is so huge for you. We're so proud of you. We're proud of the work that you've done. Anything you want to say to your graduating class? I miss y'all, and I'll see y'all whenever we get to graduate. <laughs> All right. And that is going to happen. It is delayed but not denied. Emma Kate, it's always a pleasure to see you. I miss seeing your beautiful face. I'm glad I got to see it this way. You too. <laughs> you did good, girl. All right, we'll talk with you soon. All right, bye. Bye. Emma Kate Baker, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Don Carswell, General Manager of Dublin Chevy Buick GMC. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that Dublin Chevy Buick GMC cares. Whether picking your car up for service or delivering your new car to your home, Dublin Chevrolet cares. From Dublin Chevrolet to your driveway. Anywhere in the state of Georgia. And to make it easier for you, we're offering 84 months at 0% with no payment for 120 days. Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. We've got Mr. Xavier Blash with us, but I know he's got a nickname. Hi, Xavier. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to see your face. Nice to see you too. How's it been for you being out of school, you know, under the circumstances and, and, and what have you been doing with your life? 
it's been, I don't know, it's been, it's been boring. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I used to say all the time, oh, I'm ready to graduate. I'm tired of school. I'm tired of waking up. But now that it's kind of over, I miss it a lot. I miss being with my friends. Like, I miss waking up now just going to see them. Why? See, you know, there's an old saying, say you don't miss your water till your well runs dry. And here you go, the well is dry. <laughs> I'm missing it so much. <laughs> And so, you know, Xavier, we want to we want to backtrack. I know that things have been very difficult for you all with the school closing and, and you've had to make the adjustments, missing your friends. Talk to us about your high school career. Talk to us about your family. Talk to us about the things that you've been involved in that have made you who you are. Well, I say the, the one thing that made me who I am was band. Yes. Like, the seeing the Miss Jones, like they pushed me a lot to be the person I am. Cause my eighth grade year, when I came in um, to band and um, high school, my ninth grade year, like, I wasn't all that much talk about. I was talking, I was still goofy, but I wasn't as open as I was. But right. as like, I start working with people older than me and young, younger me, I kind of expanded more. And I was, they got me into doing more stuff than I thought I would do. Let them know what, what your involvement is with the uh, Band of Gold. Um, I'm, the, uh, I'm a trumpet player. I've been a trumpet player since sixth grade, and I'm the um, section leader for the trumpets. You know, Xavier, I get the greatest joy when I would see you all in the parades, and I would try to make sure that y'all saw me so I can give y'all a wink or something. <laughs> because I know you're having to be laser focused and, and you know, just being able to see you in your element throughout through the years and to see how you've matured through the years has been beautiful. And every time I've interviewed you, you know, I always treat you special, you know that. And I have, <laughs> I've seen how you've grown. And, and so in what ways could you express yourself that you've changed and evolved into the person that you are today? Oof. Um... I'm more confident now. Like, mm -hmm. it was a lot of stuff that when I was younger that I wouldn't do if somebody tell me to do it. But now somebody tell me to do something that I know I'm confident with, I'll just jump straight into it and do it. And be like, this is how you do it. Nah, 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 nah. You know? <laughs> I'm, into it now. Like, I'm more confident with myself into doing things. Even if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to still try to do it. And And that's good because that requires... I mean, that takes time because there's a lot of people who lack the confidence to be able to kind of push through and do what they need to do. Yes, ma'am. And you're the man for the job. Yes, ma'am. Now, tell us what your plans are after graduation. Um, well, I recently got um, accepted into Albany State University. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> one of the happy and um. <laughs> Next year, I'll, next year in 2021, I'll be leaving um, for the Air Force. But for now, um, when I when I'm able to get my diploma, I'll be um start working at a um uh, as a correctional officer and going to school to become a mortician. Uh, Xavier, you have planned your entire life out, and now you've already figured out what you're gonna do for when it's time for you yourself to be buried. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to being accepted to Albany State University. That is so fantastic. And here you are, you plan on going into the Air Force as well. I tell, I just told another student, my husband is retired Air Force, so you're gonna do very well. And then, if that's not enough, you're gonna go to school to be a mortician. You got everything going on right now, Xavier. What kind of message do you wanna to give to your class of 2020? Um. I love y'all. I miss y'all so much. I um recently seen one of my classmates um, when I was at my godmama house and we talked for a long time talking about how much we miss each other. And um I wish we wouldn't have took it for granted that over sooner than we thought it was. But um I miss y'all, I love y'all and I know the class of twenty twenty, we're gonna like we're gonna blow everything out of the water. We're gonna do and and look at look at the culminating event here. We have stopped the world for y'all. <laughs> Everything gets slowed down just for us. 
just for you all to take it all in, uh, to take time to smell the roses, to really enjoy things and people that really matter and making all the adjustments that you need to make in your life to be successful. And you've definitely done that, Xavier. Well, I'm going to miss interviewing you. This is our last time. <laughs> so listen, I wish you nothing but success. Keep pushing forward, okay? And we want to hear from you. Thank you. All right. Xavier Blash, ladies and gentlemen. Proud of you, son. I'm Jeff Shepard, and we're here at Rhodes Farmer Garden to let you know that we are here for you. You may call us at 478-272-3340. We're offering curbside pickup or call in and ask about delivery on bulk items. Cooking more around the house? We have a full line of grills, fryers, along with the seasoned pellets, chips, and charcoal. Small garden or a thousand acre farm. We have everything from fertilizer, seed, and weed control. From cats to cows and every animal in between, Road Farm and Garden carries all the feed and a full line of animal care products. Trouble finding pool supplies? Roach Farm and Garden has you covered. Got too much time on your hands? Get your honey, do some plant. We have trees and shrubs arriving daily with a greenhouse full of veggies. Roach Farm and Garden in two locations, Dublin and Wrightsville. Good luck and God bless. All right, we've got the lovely drum major for East Lawrence's Band of Gold, Alexis Fordham. Hey, girl. Hey, Miss Pat. Nice to see you. It's good to see you, too. You look adorable. That looks like a matte lipstick. <laughs> Thank you. It is. Yeah. I miss those times we would have together. You know that? Tell me how the experience has been for you being out of school and having to make the adjustments now. Well, schoolwork is different definitely a lot different um we only have like maybe one assignment a week which mm -hmm. isn't i guess that's not that bad and um some teachers aren't really even assigning anything so that's you know <laughs> i mean <laughs> but uh really during this quarantine not a lot has been going on for me i've just been i've been staying at like my friend's house and all that um <laughs> you know so, and I've been seeing my little sister. She's so cute. She's like 20 months old. Her name's Michaela. <laughs> you have a 20 month old sister. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. My baby sister's 47. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and so, Alexis, let the people know, remind them about what your high school, uh, your time in high school has been like. Let them know about the things that you've been involved in. I mean, because you've been doing a lot of different things. And I know you and I have interviewed uh, on a number of occasions. And tell us about your family. Of course, you've already told us you've got a 20-month-old sibling. <laughs> yeah, well, um, my parents are April, uh, April Misty Fordham. Uh, you know, I have a 20-month-old sister by my dad. And um, I've just been spending a lot of time with her over this quarantine. But, you know, for high school, for me, has been great. Like, I actually really enjoyed it like a lot of people will say like high school's the worst part of your life but it's the best <laughs> it was the best part for me like really and um you know like I, I've always been in band and I've been in band since like sixth grade and up until now you know and I do miss that I mean I practice but it's not the same you know and so uh you know in 10th grade I became drum major and then uh, from, you know, ninth grade, I was in, uh, from ninth grade to this year, I've been in FBLA. I was an officer my 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. I've always enjoyed that. Um, you know, last year, my junior year, I cheered and, you know, it's just, I like, I've always like been out there trying different things in high school and I just, I really enjoyed it. Like I, I wasn't in FBLA in middle school and ended up being the officer, you know, and so, it's amazing how, have you, you know, looking back on your life to see how you've evolved and how you've blossomed. It's been nice, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yes, it has. And I was telling Xavier, I said, one thing that I would love to see you guys in is at the parades and different events, of course, and at the games, seeing you up there doing your thing, and you know, you know, I would always make sure I took a photo of you. <laughs> yeah. 
I've got my own Alexis Fordham album. And so yeah. all the things that you have done, the relationships that you have built and how you've evolved as a person, that has really given you some insight about being in high school and things that you really need to look out for in order to be successful. So what words could you give to underclassmen coming up on what they need to do to be a successful senior high school student? Well, what I would say, definitely join clubs or sports or do art or whatever you like to do because one, that's gonna keep you out of trouble. You know, like if you're, I mean, I, I've always been a good kid and I've always had straight A's and, you know, just keep your mind on stuff like that, like school, if you like school and just like, you know, try to focus on all the good things because there's going to be bad things in high school. It sucks sometimes, but <laughs> it, it's great to have a support system, your friends, your family, you know, and so just that's, that's the good thing about like being in clubs, being in band, like you have so many support systems throughout like those clubs, your school, you have teachers you can talk to, like advisors, band directors, et cetera. And so all of the, the things that you involved in, the advisors that you've had, the leaders that you've had that have been there with you, I mean, and then the friendships that you've made. So you've made a lot of friend, friendships and connections throughout of this. So that's really helped you flourish, hasn't it? Absolutely, yes. Um, like, you know, I look up to Mr. Sin and Miss Jones and, you know, I have several teachers that I would like to thank for, you know, just allowing me to be myself and, you know, being at East Lawrence has been great and I love, I loved it all. And they're going, <laughs> and they're all going to miss you so very much. Anything you'd like to say to the class of 2020? Um, we just, we have to stick together through this and we have to keep our heads strong and we're definitely going to go down in history as <laughs> the class that didn't graduate, um, you know, <laughs> so I just, you know, and if we can't get like a prom or if we can't get a senior picnic, we can do it ourselves. And you know, with all of this, all of this is happening, things that have had to get canceled and postponed and, and are up in the air. It's like, uh, what I'm proud of is to see you all taking it in stride. Yeah, I definitely think that we, like we, the class of 2020 are definitely, we've gotten stronger because of this, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a crappy situation, but we're all trying to make the best out of it. And um, I'm just excited to see what graduation will be like or what our prom will be like if, you know, like, because Gigi's formals is supposed to be thrown a prom or, you know, if we have a senior picnic or a senior trip, what all that will be like. And, you know, we have, you know, certain times called for a certain sort of thing. That's right. So we've got a lot of things that are up in the air for the future, but we're still looking forward to having a bright future. And speaking of your future, you got to tell us quickly, where do you plan on going? What do you plan on doing after high school? Um, I'm probably just going to start off getting my core classes in, in Dublin, Middle Georgia, or GMC, and uh, I'm going to go for music education, and I'm going to be a band director. Of course you are, and you've got some wonderful role models through Jonathan Sin and Miss Jones. So yes, congratulations for everything you have achieved thus far and for the things that are yet to come for you, Alexis. <music>
right, we've got Mr. Nicholas Fountain with us. How are you? Good, are you? Good, nice to see you. Nice to see you. What have you been doing throughout these past weeks that school has been out, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus? Trying to make sure I get all my work done with efficiency and the dedication. Look at you. Have you had time to kind of relax a little bit? Hey, ma'am. You have been? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Now, Nicholas, we want to hear about you. We want to know about your family, who your parents are, what you've been involved in while you've been at East Lawrence, and what has been your best experience there. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, go for it. All right. So, my family, I have two brothers, older brothers, Michael, Brand Brandon Michael Lawrence and Charles Daniels. My mom is Naomi Fountain and my dad is Don Fountain. My mom is a stay-at-home mom, usually, who usually helps around the house. I usually help her when I can. And my dad works at Flex Fit Industries in the shipping department. Very good. And so what things have you been involved in while you've been at East Lawrence? Any extracurricular activities, any sports, anything like that? I have competed in state and for Steel USA, um, I've helped through from my ninth to 12th grade year with Interact, which is a community service club. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar. Now, Skills USA state competition, that's impressive. What has been your field? Um, High-risk traffic stop. Wow. And, you know, of course, with this year where we had to, you know, state competitions, you know, unfortunately were canceled. Tell me about your experience in Skills USA and what you have learned that's so valuable from there. Skills USA really helps you grow as a person, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It helps you understand how to communicate with other people, how to work as a team, and just generally how to, you know, have a better communication, get you a lot more out of your shell into more of a comfortable place. It doesn't ever try to drag you out. It just gently eases you out of your shell. That's good. So have you been gently eased out of your shell now, Nicholas? <laughs> what about Interact Club? Because I know with Interact Club, with Ms. Clardy, you do a lot of, uh, there's a lot of volunteer service that is involved, service oriented. Tell us about that. So we often will go down to the country club when they have our, their um, Rotary Club meetings and we'll help usually set the tables, get the drinks set up, make sure everything's going smoothly, just kind of making sure everything goes right. And so here it is, you're involved in clubs, you've, you've excelled at them, you've come out of your shell, and now here it is, you're about to graduate. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to miss most about high school? I think the thing I miss most is probably all the teachers. A lot of them are really fun and fun going, very loving and caring about us. And that's good. And for you to say that, that means a lot because I think that as teachers, it's sometimes a thankless service that they do because they pour so much into us as when we're as students and we really, the teachers expect you to not only grasp what they're teaching, but also to develop socially. And the fact that you are going to miss them, I bet that's going to warm their hearts when they hear this interview. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what's next? What are you doing after high school? I'm planning on hopefully going to either UGA or Ben's College to complete a veterinarian study. Very nice. This is impressive. Now, do you have any veterinarians in your family? Or are you becoming the Lone Ranger? Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. Well, you know, that says a lot about you to be able to find a field of study that you want to pursue and then uh, to actually, I'm sure one day you'll have your own veterinary clinic, would you say? Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm trying to do, actually. Well, we're so proud of you. What message do you want to give, Nicholas, to your class of 2020? Because with school ending abruptly and you're not getting able, to, getting the opportunity to have that closure that you normally have gearing up towards graduation, what message do you want to give to your class of 2020? To stay positive, and I'm going to miss all of them. <laughs> and you're staying positive, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, Nicholas, anything that you want to say to your family? Thank you for always being so supportive. <laughs> You're a man of many words, Nicholas. You know that? <laughs> and so here it is. You're, you're about to go off to college. 
uh, you're going to graduate the end of this summer, you know, once we when things die down and we get things to where we're getting back into some normalcy and you're going to leave behind your family for school. Tell us, are you ready for that? You're ready for that adjustment to take place? Hey, ma'am. I think it'd be an exciting new chapter in my life. A new chapter. And so you're ready to turn the page. Yes, ma'am. All right, Nicholas. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. You too. I look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. Thank you. All right. This is Nicholas Fountain, everybody. Take care of yourself, Nicholas. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Matt Sapp, inviting you to come see us at Dexter Meat Company. Our fresh cut meats include cube steak, stew beef, chuck roast, chuck eye steak, ground beef, ground chuck, and if you love steaks, you'll really love our New York strip, T-bone, and our ribeye and choice or prime cuts. And our marinated steaks have a distinctive taste that you'll be sure to love. We invite all our neighbors to come see us for the freshest cut of meat. Remember, we cater to. Call ahead and we'll have it fixed for you. Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday 8 to 6. Lawrence County is home to lots of wonderful people and many thriving small towns and communities. Although our population size does not require an attorney to serve as probate judge, as a community that is green and growing, we deserve a judge that is dedicated, compassionate, and has spent years studying and practicing probate law. I am that candidate, and I want to serve you. We got the lovely Aniliana Strickland with us today. Hi, Aniliana. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Now, this has been such a whirlwind senior year for you, hasn't it? Yes, ma'am. So when you first got the news, March 13th, schools closing, and then all of a sudden, bam, events canceling, rescheduling, and that's the end of your senior year. What were your initial reactions? In the beginning, I was excited. You know, two weeks, no school, and then have to wake up in the morning. But once they um, said school would cancel for the rest of the year, my heart dropped. Like, yeah. it was just like no prom, might not be no graduation, anything. So it was just a sad moment, you know, and it was like, if I would have known that would have happened, I would have took more advantage of like the talks that I had with my teachers and with my classmates, you know, if I have known that was the last moment, I would have got to see them. I know it's as, it's as though you didn't have the closure that you were expecting to have, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. And so Aniliana, if you can reflect back, remember when you were a freshman? Yes, ma'am. Fresh out of middle school going to the high school it's like your world was like oh my gosh and so that that young aniliana transferred all through four years here it is you're about to graduate in what ways have you changed and grown as a young lady to make you a better person through those years i matured a lot like i got comfortable with myself more i'm an open-minded to people when i'm speaking and stuff like that like and that comes with time, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. And throughout those years, um, you've had a lot of influences in your life, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. So when you started in high school, and then here it is as a senior, you, uh, you were involved in what? Sports, extracurricular activities, clubs, volunteer service. Tell us about all that. I was involved in band for all four years of high school, and then I was involved in FBLA for one year and FCCLA for two years. Oh my gosh, the band of gold. That's your other family. Yes, ma'am. What message do you want to give to uh, the band of gold, your bandmates, the ones that you have been with and have been with through with you through thick and thin? What do you want to say to them? That I miss them so much. Like, even though it's times to get crazy, you know, we all stuck beside each other no matter what. And I love them with all my heart. And, you know, you guys have done so many things. You know, of course, I love seeing you all in the parades. You already know how crazy I get when I see you. <laughs> and those are things that you're truly going to miss, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. 
And then, you know, talking about saying goodbyes to your, your teachers, you know, the administrators, the staff there, what do you want to say to them? Because I know there's several of them that really impacted your life in a positive way. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate them so much. I appreciate they, them being hard on me and everything. Like, I might not understood it back in the day, but now I understood why they did. They made me who I am today, and I appreciate them so much. I love that. And, you know, when you think about things that happened in high school, what is it that was the highlight of your high school career, and what is it that you're going to miss the most? I'm going to miss walking down the hallways. Like, like, for some reason, through all my four years of high school, they always put, like, my classes way par apart from each other. So, like, them long walks, I might used to dread them back in the day, but I'm really going to miss them. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and that's how that senior walk, you know, you all were anticipating the senior walk where you all got to walk those hallways for the last time. And so it's those little things that you think about that you're going to miss so much. Yes, ma'am. And what about your family? Tell us about your family. And, you know, for you being in the band of gold, you know, band parents, I know that you have to have a strong support system and also being a part of the clubs. Tell us about your family and the support that they've been for you through the years. My mom, she's really been there for me majority of the time. And, you know, my brothers and my sisters, they've been there too. They just like crazy. They get hyped, you know, how, how they is. <laughs> And so after high school, what's next for you? College. I plan on attending Valdosta State University and majoring in early childhood education. You're going to be a teacher. Yes, ma'am. Any teachers that have stood out for you that, that you would like to emulate in their good habits? Miss Peggy Newman. Although she was tough, she really impacted it. She really got my mind set on being a teacher. I love that. And so here it is. You're about to transition all the way to Valdosta State University. You're going to start your education. Oh. Hmm. Are there, is there some sadness there, too, and also excitement, a little bittersweetness there? Yes, ma'am. Like, I'm getting, like, the moment that I felt when I first entered high school, that's, like, how I'm feeling about first entering college. Yeah. And so, but all the things that you've learned, how you have matured through the years, that's going to help you when you transition to college as a freshman. And what advice do you want to give to the underclassmen, Aniliana? Because high school can sometimes be a struggle. And you know you had to learn some things the hard way. You've had to grow up in a lot of areas. What kind of words of encouragement do you want to leave with the young people? I want to tell them that if they feel like they could do, like if they want to do a club or any kind of sports, or any kind of activity, they should do it. Like, if their friends don't want to do it, that shouldn't stop them from doing it. They should go ahead and do it because they real regret it. I know I did. <laughs> and, you know, and for you, you talking about, you know, if there's something you want to do, you've got to do it. And, you know, you've gotten, you've gotten to do some things that you love to do for many years, and now here it is. You're about to transition. What words do you want to leave with your class of 2020? Because I know there are a lot of things that you all had planned on doing. And because of uh, the pandemic, you've had to put some things on hold on the back burner or had to cancel it. What do you want to say to the class of 2020? I'm proud of y'all. Even though I might not like some of y'all, I'm proud of you. I love you. <laughs> Isn't that, that's just like family though, isn't it? And you know, the East Lawrence Falcons, the Band of Gold, you all are a family and family's there through thick and thin, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ma'am. Any last words? Thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and it's nice to see that pretty face of yours again. Thank you. We expected nothing but great things from you, Aniliana. The sky is the limit for you. We want you to stay focused, and we cannot wait to see you in a classroom changing lives. Thank you. This is the lovely Aniliana Strickland, East Lawrence High School, Class of 2020. Georgia Military College is a two-year associate's degree granting institution. We are an open admissions college. What that means is all you need to do is have a high school diploma or a GED to get accepted into GMC. We offer several associate's degree programs including business administration, pre-nursing, psychology, criminal justice, as well as education. 
We offer classes during the morning, evening, and at night. We even offer some weekend classes. We offer online classes as well as in-seat classes, whatever is convenient for you and your schedule. We are located at 200 South Jefferson Street in Dublin, Georgia. If you want a great education with small class sizes, affordable tuition, we would love to see you here. Stop by to see us or give us a call. Start here, go anywhere. Georgia Military College, Dublin Campus. We've got Miss Jada Davis with us. Hi, Jada. Hey. Nice to see your lovely face. Thank you. Nice to see yours, too. Thank you. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, ma'am. When you got the news, Jada, that schools were going to be closed, um, not for uncertain times, and then, of course, closed for the rest of your year, your senior year at that, what was your initial reaction? The initial reaction when we just closed for a week or two was like, it was like a break, you know, like, okay, we finally got out of school for a little bit extra. But then when they said we'll be out for the rest of the school year, it hit different because, you know, prom and graduation all last year, we didn't get to experience it as a class. I'm sure it did. And you're not by yourself. So many seniors were like, have been telling me the same thing. And it's like, first they're like, okay, I kind of need this little break. But then it was like, oh my gosh, the reality began to set in and then all kind of feelings and emotions started coming forth. Right. And so your senior year is here. Do you remember you were a freshman? Yes, ma'am. I've been walking right. to the school scared. <laughs> Share with us about your high school experience, things that you've been involved in, sports, extracurricular activities, any kind of clubs, volunteer service. We want to hear all about it. Go for it, Jada. Yes, well, I'm, I'm a member of Beta for all four years, two years of Skills USA, and one mem well, one year of FBLA. I held regular with the um, nursing homes with my church. I go around giving out clothes and food and like candy and stuff like that, socks and stuff, and just spending time with them because, you know, we don't want to forget about anybody, things like that. And tell us about, act tell us about sports. I also did three years of soccer, one year of basketball. And so you've been doing quite a bit of things and in your volunteer service too, giving back. What's the name of your church? New Bible Believers Baptist Church. New Bible Believers. And so you've been doing all of these things. You've been so involved. Were you involved this much when you were a freshman? Not at first because, you know, just, yeah, just the things. But then when it came time for me to actually step up, I did and decided to be part of something. That's good. And you know, when you, Jada, when you make a, a mental assessment of yourself when you started out and in high school straight out of middle school and into your freshman year there's a lot of things about you that you had to change and how you had to learn and grow right right tell us about some things that you've had to do to to grow to change to be a better person to be the jada you are today well academically i had to pay attention more because more in like middle school everything's like handed to you know if you didn't get it you know like either got, um, the teacher gave it to you but in high school it's kind of you get the material, they'll help you when you need it, but you was really on your own. Like you had to study and stuff like that. How have you been able to keep everything balanced? Cool. Um, you know, I have great friends to help me out with that and great parents and a great uh, support system to help me keep balance so I don't get overwhelmed on one thing in life. And this is so important to have a great support system. Tell us about your family, Jada, and uh, the times they've been there for you and what message you want to give to them. Well, my family's been awesome with me during high school. I mean, they helped me every step away from projects to being at games, cheer me on. And I like, I just want to say thank you because at the end of the day, they didn't have to do it, but they did. You know, it's been a great, it's been great to spend time with them during my school time. And you know, a lot of times, you know, parents uh, being there for their children, like we are, it's just something, it's just a, a part of our nature of what we do. And so it's glad, it's good to hear when uh, it's being appreciated and you really see the value of having family there with you through thick and thin. Yes, sir. And so what's next for you after, after high school? After high school, I will attend Georgia Southern to get my political science degree. And after that, I'll be transferred to Georgia State to law school. For law school, very good. Girl, this is impressive. Now, have you ever lived away from home before? No, ma'am. Be the first I, time. <laughs> Jada, Jada, can you, are you ready for that or what? I think I'm ready, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me ask this. Do you do your own laundry already? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so that's one step towards the right direction. Right. So with you getting ready to transition, you're going to Georgia Southern, and then, you, then you're going to transfer the, to Georgia State for law school. That is so impressive, and I know it's going to require a lot of hard work for you. Give a message to the underclassmen, Jada, because there's a lot of kids who are having to, uh, to, to struggle. They're struggling and, and trying to balance their academics as well as their, their clubs and their sports. And you've been in beta all four years. Give them some encouragement on what it's going to take for them to get to that next level. It's going to take hard work and dedication. You have to stay focused on what's important in your life. Like, spend time with friends. It's going to be on the back side so you can get farther in life. That's right, and it's going to require that. And so here it is, you know, throughout these years, you've had teachers, you've had mentors that have been there, uh, the administrators. What do you want to say to them? I just want to say thank you for supporting me and being there when I needed questions, asked, and things like when I need advice about life and school. I just want to say thank you for always being there. What are you going to miss most about high school, and what is it that you're not going to miss one bit? <laughs> The thing I'm not going to miss one bit is the food. Like, I'm not going to miss lunch. I don't, I do not like that period. And I'm going to miss hanging out with friends in the hallways and class, talking to the teachers. Just the overall experience I'm going to miss. And, you know, when you kind of uh, look back on things in retrospect and the fact that now we've got the shelter in place and, and normal things that you were just so used to doing every day, now you're not able to do them. Do them. It's really uh, making you appreciate the little things, isn't it? All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Here we go. This is your chance now, your opportunity to give a message to the class of 2020 because I think a lot of your peers are, you know, really disheartened by the fact that there's so many things that you're not going to be able to do or that you had planned. A lot of closure you didn't get to, uh, to do, you know, closing things off. And so what do you want to say to the class of 2020? I mean, I love each and every individual. They might not got along 24-7, but at the end of the day, I still got love for everybody in my class. We got we um, went into the ninth grade year together, and we're leaving as a class, no matter what. And I hope everybody does their best in life, no matter if I talk to you again or see you. But I hope I'm room for everybody the best. Very good. Thank you, Jada. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Good to see you walk in those halls. I'm going to miss that. This looks like it's our last interview, and we've been through a lot together. Yes, ma'am. All right. Congratulations on your future endeavors. I look forward to, to seeing what the end's going to be for you, and I know it's going to be great. Stay focused, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Jada Davis, everyone. Hurry home. Boys, we got to go. <laughs> Oh, we're racing. Let's see what you got, boys. Not today, boys. Hey, I got your text. What's the emergency? What text? Where is my phone? <laughs> River wanted to play. All right, we've got the lovely Miss Tanisha Strickland with us. Hi, Tanisha. Hi, Miss Pat. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. You looking good. You have not let this shelter in place keep you down. <laughs> oh, I've been rocking the bunny until today. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Tanisha, you and I, I remember when I first met you and I looked at you and you were just cutting the food. Remember that? Ooh, <laughs> I do. I don't forget nothing. <laughs> I said, what in the world? <laughs> and look at you. Here you are. You are getting ready to graduate, Tanisha. How does it feel? Um, well, when I thought I was going to be able to participate in like the graduation walk, see you walking mm -hmm. on it, it felt great. But now that I know that I'm not doing any of that, it kind of sucks a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's hard because, you know, really, when you talk about your senior year, you have so many plans that you were going to do with your class, so many expectations that were just, you know, a given. 
And so here it is now, you're having to have a new normal. And it takes a little adjusting, doesn't it? After going to school for 10 something years, it do take a little adjusting. <laughs> it does. It's like it stopped abruptly, didn't it? Yes, it was like, for summer, when we get out for the summer, they blow all the horns on the buses. We, we didn't even get that. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's like as though the world ended for the seniors, right? Right. Well, we don't got to take no more tests, so. I know, I know. So there are some positives. And so I'm glad we're able to to uh, to talk to one another and see uh, one another via Zoom. So you'll get to say some last words here, a little bit of closure. Remind us about you, Tanisha. Tell us about things you've been involved in, sports, uh, extracurricular activities, any kind of volunteer service you've been doing. Talk to us about all that. Um, I do play a sport. I play tennis. I played it for three years. Um, tenth grade, I was in the FFA. And I volunteered at, um, it was it was like a mental health club for children, you know, that, I forgot what it's called, I forgot what it's called, but I was, um, I was volunteering there for about a couple, for a couple years, yeah. And so for you, do you remember you were a freshman? Oh, yes. <laughs> in what, in what ways have you seen yourself change through the years? Because I think when you go to high school as a freshman, there's a lot of things that you don't know. And there's also a lot of things and a lot of ways that we have to grow up. So tell us about how you have evolved through the years, things that you've had to change about yourself to be a better person. Okay, um, first, all through middle school, I was loud, I was so hyped. I don't know where I got an energy from. And it's like, me and my brother kind of switched energies because he, he was so laid back and chill and now, I still have that in me, but like, I can get like that. It's just, it's not my normal anymore to be loud and all that. So it's, it kind of changed me, you know, and it's kind of the bad situations that made me learn patience, you know. So I respect those bad memories the same way I respect the good ones because they can change you as well. Uh, Tanisha, I love that because the I see how you've matured to where you could actually take things that weren't always the positive about you and see like, okay, I've got to make some adjustments. So that shows some maturity on your part. Thank you. So when you think about uh, the things that you've done your high school and senior career, what has stood out the most that has been the most enjoyable for you? Um, it's kind of the fact that our school, like our principals, they know like we're seniors, they know what it comes with, and they give us a little leeway. So, <laughs> there were a couple times, you know, that I've gotten away with some things. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, you know, so they let them slide. I'm like, you're a senior now. They gave us that talk. <laughs> so, what, is it, <laughs> what is it that you're going to miss the least about your high school experience? Um... Oh, okay. The boring times, like in class, where you just got to be quiet. Because you know how when somebody says you can't do something, the more you want to do it. So it was like, you got to be quiet taking this test. Or if we get in trouble, you can't go outside. I was like, I want to go out and do it. <laughs> I know. There's some freedoms you didn't have in high school. And now this time is almost over, uh, Tanisha, for you. What are you going to do after high school? What are your plans? I'm going to the Army. I will be at HR 42 Alpha, which is Human Resources. I will be going active duty, and I, I leave like the second week in July. Oh, my gosh. Tanisha, this is so awesome. You've got to keep in touch. You've got to let us know how you're doing. I'm, <laughs> I'm very familiar with the military. was an Army wife for 20 years, so I understand. I'm excited about what you're going to do in Human Resources. That's so very important. In the, in the U.S. Army, so this is exciting. Thank you, and I know that veteran status, when I get out, will give me, <laughs> you know, leverage. <laughs> oh, in the civilian world, you know. That's right. Tell us about your family and the fact of your family support and the people that have been there for you. Um, my sister, my aunts, my grandmother, you know, it's kind of like, it was a team effort. So they kind of just, you know, they let me, I was working, so they just let me work. Like, I work, 
sport come home. So when this happened, it was just like, so I moved in with my sister, you know, so I just got to do what I wanted to do a little bit, you know, so, <laughs> but after I quit my job, I just, you know, started relaxing because <laughs> it was school, practice, work every day. You never had time to relax, did you? I did not step from Sundays. You know, I've seen you on the job a few times. <laughs> and what is your fa huh? I <laughs> what does your family think about you transitioning and going into the military? Oh, they love it. Like because I talk so much, they're like sometimes they be like, "I'm so ready for you to go." <laughs> but I know when I leave, they're gonna be like, "No." <laughs> oh yeah, this is gonna really change you, Tanisha. I'm looking forward to seeing seeing what happens. I want to see the end result of this. And so what message do you want to give to uh, the, the underclassmen, the kids that are being left behind? Uh, what kind of encouraging words do you want to give to them? I just want to say, like, if you have a friend group or a best friend that you feel like you can trust with your secrets and how you're feeling about certain things, you should always have a person you feel like you can go to, you know? So I will hold on to them. Like me personally, I don't have a best friend because I'm friends with everybody. You know, I don't feel I am. I don't know why I'm so friendly, but I just feel like there shouldn't be no bad blood between people. And you never know how someone's feeling one day because I'll walk up to you, don't know, you say, hey, and they'll look at me crazy. And then they'll smile and I just walk out. I love that. What message do you want to give to the class of 2020? Oh, um, it's. We, it doesn't end here. I promise we don't because we got so much ahead of us. So the class that was quarantined, um, they gonna remember us. <laughs> <laughs> you're, ga you're going down in history. All right, Tanisha, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. This is our last interview from your, for your whole high school career. I think it's my first day late. <laughs> I know. I know, we developed a friendship from my coming to the schools and seeing you out there on the tennis courts and, and now here it is, you're gonna continue and you're gonna do great things and we're so excited about what the future holds for you. Thank you. All right, love you. I love you too, Miss Pat. This is Mr. T Tanisha Strickland. Building relationships is as easy as FSB. For more than 100 years, Farmer State Bank has been helping people just like you. Integrity, commitment, service. That's Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Farmer State Bank, Lawrence County's leader in hometown banking. We've got the lovely Miss Jatia Roberts with us. Hi, Jatia. Hi. I'm loving those curls. Thank you. How have you been with everything? I mean, when school had to close abruptly, I mean, I'm sure you had an initial thought of like, <laughs> mm -hmm. how's everything been for you? Good. Just try to keep my head up. I mean, you know, your senior year had, you had so many expectations of how your senior year was going to end. And so how, you've been adjusting to keep your head up, right? Yes, ma'am. Remind us about your high school career. Tell us about any sports or extracurricular activities that you've been involved in these past four years. I've been involved in color guard for three years. Any, any clubs, any other things? No, ma'am. So color guard has been your family? Yes. And tell us about that relationship that you all have had with one another. Um, it was, it was good. We've been working out, um, stick each other, stick for each other, you know, and have fun. Well, I'm going to miss seeing you in the parades. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so when you started off as a freshman, Jatia, and then of course, uh, about to graduate soon, what ways have you changed through the years in order to, to mature and things that you had to learn and, and, and grow in areas? Mm, to make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. So you have evolved then, right? Yes. <laughs> so you're even wiser now. Yes. 
Talk to us about your family and support system. Um, they always support me. Um, I whenever they always they always there for me. Whenever I need to talk to them about even my good days or bad days, they always here for me no matter what. And so, you know, I'm sure you've had to lean on your support system a little bit now, especially with uh, with the 2020 class ending the way it has. What have you been doing during this quarantine time? Nothing much. Be trying to get my work done <laughs> so I can graduate and pass. That's right. And, you know, for you, after graduation, you've got some plans. What do you have planned to do? Of course, go to maybe a technical college for two years. What do you want to major in? Neonatal. Very good. That's a great field for you. Great field of study. Now, this is your chance here to kind of let us know uh, what kind of messages do you want to give out there to your to your to the teachers that have influenced you, the administrators, the staff, because you did not get a chance to really tell them goodbye. What do you want to say to them? Just hang in there. It's going to be all right. It's going to get gray or later. Just hang in there. <laughs> And do you want to thank them for influencing your life in any way? Yes, I want to thank them for teaching me in and helping me um, throughout the school years and helping me pass all my grades. I really appreciate that. Very good. And of course, you know, undergraduates usually are looking up to the seniors. They're watching you. And so what kind of advice, what words of encouragement do you want to leave to the underclassmen and for the freshmen that are going to be upcoming that are going to be coming into high school for next year? Just make wise decisions, do the right thing, stay on task, focus. Yeah. <laughs> and your senior class, I mean, you're missing your senior walk, your senior picnic, and you guys had already had all these things you're going to do, and you didn't have the closure with your class that you wanted to have. Now, this is your chance to talk to them. What do you want to say to the class of 2020? that just hang in there and do right and y'all beautiful and y'all smart and just hang in there. It's going to be all right. I promise. And Jatia, it's apparent that you've been hanging in there because you're telling everybody to just hang in there. <laughs> so what kind of words, what kind of words of encouragement do you want to leave with me, Jatia? Because here it is. You know, I love being able to interact with the students and the people of Dublin Lawrence County. And now here it is, I'm having to Zoom with everybody. I can't reach out and touch. And so this is affecting me a little bit. So what do you want to say to encourage me? Um, you're an amazing person. I love you, darling. Thank you so much. And listen, you hang in there because I think that we as a community, we're definitely in this together. And our hearts definitely go out to the class of 2020 because you all are definitely going through some struggles that we are not. And so we want to encourage you all to hang in there. Okay? Okay. And we look forward to what the future holds for you. We know it's going to be bright. Continue to stay focused. Continue to keep your eye on the prize, Jatia. The sky is the limit for you. Thank you. Any last words to anyone else? No. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the lovely Jatia Roberts, East Lawrence High School, class of 2020.